demonetized. <laughs> Shadow Bay Slayer. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the Rantcast podcast. I hope you can hear me. I hope everything is smoothed out and good to go. I am Josh, also known as the Strange Bus. I am here with my co-host Kurgan, also known as HeroQuest Fans, and you can find him at Twitch.tv/slash HeroQuest Fans. That's Twitch.tv/slash HeroQuest Fans. Hey, Elviler's hey. here. What's going on, Elviler? Um, we had some huge issues because I forgot to import everything to the Rantcast podcast account, which is that's what we're going by because there are more people that go by the Rantcast. So we're restarting, technically, Joe. Going back to episode one, this is the official podcast of the Rantcast podcast. So <clears throat> nothing against those other Rantcasts out there, but this is the Rantcast that you're looking for. Huh. The Rantcast podcast. So you're looking for people that just bitch about stuff. You've come to the right place. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about here tonight. We've got Hero Quest, Heroescape, and Star Wars. You know the three threes we talk about usually. Searching for good in a greedy place. <laughs> We're gonna be opening with the Hero Quest slash Heroescape Power Hour. It'll be starting with Kurgan. Then we'll be talking about some new shows that kind of opened up with Star Wars and or Tales of the Jedi. Personal opinions, um, how they've been uh, kind of publicized and reviewed by critics. And then we'll kind of go on to some other forms of media if we have enough enough time. Because we kind of started a little bit late and that's all my fault. But we'll go ahead and open up here with Kurgan. With the rant or rant cast hero quest <laughs> power hour, go ahead and take it away, good sir. Hey, it's great to be here on the rant cast. <laughs> Noise canceling. Yeah, if you if you knew what we had to go through to bring this to you. Anyway, yeah, it's like the forces of chaos were conspiring against us tonight, but that's all right. I know all about the forces of chaos. So it's not so much about Hero Quest tonight as another game you may have heard of called Hero Escape. Now, if you're like me, you played Hero Quest in the early 90s, and by like 92, 93, 94, it was kind of going away. Uh, I was doing other stuff, but there was this other game called Hero Escape. Um, and that one had started in, I think it was 2004. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. And it was going strong for like four, five, six years, and then it kind of faded out. But I mean, it had like tons of expansions. Stephen Baker and I want to say was, is it Chris Von Ness or Craig Von Ness? Somebody can correct me on that. Were like the head designers and one other guy on Heroescape. And it was a very expandable game. You had like a Marvel tie-in. You had just all kinds of stuff. It was hugely popular. Go to Board Game Geek. You can find like pages, pages of data on it. And they were doing a, a pledge drive similar to what HeroQuest did in 2020. And this pledge drive is going on right now. It's not an ad for it, but we're going to tie this in here. It's called HeroScape Age of Annihilation Vanguard Edition. It's uh, $249.99. It's got five days in like a one hour and 23 minutes left to reach 8,000 backers. And they're at 3,583 backers. And as far as I can tell, like I'm not, I I didn't play the game back in the day, but they say it was like eight times more popular than Hero Quest. It's got a huge online fan base, very popular game to this day, Um, very collectible, very expensive. Um, If you're going for the original game, this new thing is supposed to be compatible with the old one. And the only downside people have been saying is that, well, it's not painted. If the figures aren't painted, the original, they were pre-painted. But uh, a lot of people are really nervous about it. And I kind of feel bad for them because, I don't know, it it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like they're going to reach their goal. Um, And it looks like it's a fun game. Um, I've read a little bit about it. I've done a little bit of research. So kind of like you, Strange Bus, when you were doing the research on HeroQuest, you know, trying to sound smart about it. I mean, you've actually played HeroQuest, so I haven't played HeroScape. So I'm going to probably sound like an idiot talking about it. But uh, you've got all these tiles that you use to build up terrain. You've got your armies. 
and it's kind of a mixture of like fantasy and sci-fi and it's just like firefights and you know melee battles you've got these big bosses that you can bring in and you've got these cool looking cards and it looks like they made a little a few improvements um you know the storyline is all about time travel and how the universe is going to get destroyed unless the right faction wins but they've got a lot of the tiles that are like joined together so you don't have to like stack it tile by tile you just kind of have a big piece that you can put on and you can i guess you could buy more than one set to really expand it but they limit each person to five buys like it's kind of confusing so instead of like with the request they put it in sheer dollar numbers here it's like each backer is a buy so you could order five sets for 250 each and that would be your limit so that kind of makes me think, okay, they're planning to be scalper proof and it might be a retail product, but that's assuming they reach their goal, which they don't have much time left. I mean, they're going to have to pull off a miracle to get it. And they've got all these stretch goals that, I mean, they're not going to make it. So what's going to happen to this project? How much did they invest in it? Um, you know, people like in Carmine, you know, been doing videos on it and stuff. And it's like, oh man. Thanks for following, Polsky. I appreciate it. Hey, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, we're building the rant cast back. This is awesome. So anyway, Avalon Hills at the head. Hasbro approved it, promoted it, put it through Haslabs, and this is not the. This would not just to look on the on the uh, on the realistic side. This would be not the first time that they've had a failure. Like I've looked up other products. There was like a Ghost Rider product that failed. Project fundraiser that failed there was cookie monster that failed there was a rancor that failed there was reva's lightsaber that failed so i don't know i feel bad like if this fails is this gonna like like i i don't know what it's really like at, at hasbro but i i just picture somebody who's just you know looking at the bottom line like oh i guess no one's interested in this stuff you know let's just cut the funding like i hope it doesn't trickle down and impact the other board game stuff Cause that'd be really sad. I mean, as a Hero Quest fan, I've gotten a lot of stuff from this new Avalon Hill thing, and they keep, you know, they've promised us a lot of stuff, and I hope that that isn't impacted by this, you know. But I feel bad for the HeroScape fans, who you know don't have their sets anymore, and we're hoping that this was going to come out. Now they're going to be going to eBay and paying through the nose for the old stuff. No problem. Yeah. Um. So I I guess just giving my two cents on it, right? Uh, yeah. Kurgan kind of gave me a fill in on on how this is has how Hasbro works on this sort of stuff, right? This is Hasbro. Haslab, so, yeah. Haslab fundraisers. So this isn't their first rodeo, but I feel like as far as the 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 board game thing goes, if I'm showing showcasing this, showcasing this off right, and I hope everybody can see it. Like I said, the, this was imported from my previous account so i hope everything is right i hope everybody can hear it hear us okay but I out the bugs this time um it really is kind of a, a shame because i'd like to so i don't know how what were the hero quest stats um when they released it like this so hero quest goal they said if we get a million dollars it'll go into production and you had the 99.99 basic heroic tier and then you had the 149.99 mythic tier okay. and back then you could spend as much money as you wanted so you could order like 20 30 sets whatever with this they're limiting you to five okay and how and they're much... saying eight thousand backers which is okay. almost two million dollars and did they ever plan on re-releasing your request naturally after this was done depending on what the numbers were or did we they don't know on? okay so other than we we see in carmine and some other people they they can only tell us certain things and i understand like they're bound by non-disclosure agreements or whatever but their job Let's, yeah yeah they, they got to follow the rules so yeah. all they could tell us is that they the the guys that are in the avalon hill division or whatever you want to call it they really wanted it to go to retail but they had to prove themselves first they had to show that it was profitable and once it reached that goal then it was yeah sure of course it's going to go to retail but usually this stuff does not go onto store shelves okay this is going to come off really i don't know if this is going to come off controversial or not but this almost like this it. looks really good, like yeah. crafted really well, right? It's they the same, they, they were sculpt. painted, right? Yeah. They're not painted. They have the same sculpting. The people that did the sculptures for the Hero Quest remake are are also doing. But like this. this is almost like a like if they wanted to re-release a modern day mousetrap and then make you pay for it, and then not retail release it. 
So, um, because to me, as far as I've known, HeroScape isn't widely known. Not anymore. Um, not anymore. And it, I mean, like, okay, so how, 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 how not widely known is it? Like, how far back are we talking? Well, that's a good question. Because I think, I, I want to say it was 2012 when the last thing was really. Okay, so let me retract that statement. Sorry. It's like them kind of refunding maybe an old Star Wars game or something. Something that people are for, come mildly fond of, yeah. but they're they're making you pay for it. And then once again, this is kind of like one of those things where I think brand or branding and marketing come come into play. Mm-hmm. Um because if if what I'm getting is true, this is the only time you'll be able to buy it. It's yeah. 250 bucks. They want 8,000 people to back it up. And then after that, it goes to a market. It doesn't get re-released unless it's popular or anything like that. And this is good work, right? Yeah, I don't I I get the impression that if they don't make their goal, it's not coming to stores. Period. 71 miniatures. You got 68. Is that Larwall terrain pieces? There's a lot of there's a lot of shit in here. Yeah. And now um, I did paint the tile. I feel like the the sword is a little misrepresented. That, like, if that came with that katana, I would <laughs> I would I'd get it just for the katana. And oh, it comes with a cool game too. Cheap katana. It's only <laughs> 250. Probably wall hanger. Yeah, yeah. It, the funding ends in five days. Uh. Like almost five days exactly, and they still need what almost half, less than half, or more than half. Half of their target base hasn't been met. So they need they need Elon, they need uh, Jeff Bezos, they need Zuck. They I'm need not saying Bill they're Gates. I'm not saying they're meeting unrealistic expectations here, but they're pretty they're pretty high. And you only had two months to pledge. Yeah, and for two months for a game that like I I didn't even I didn't know nothing about HeroScape, and I'm not like the big guy here, but like. Uh, I never played it, but yeah. I mean, I would give it a chance. Of course, I have kind of a personal many... like two hundred bucks for a board game. I don't want to spend more than that, and I know it's expensive. To well, make board games look at um, days. there's a lot of Star Wars. What was it? There's a Star Wars board game that I know of that comes in big. Like there's a, it's a big box game, and like some of the X Wing. No, no, X Wing is reasonable. That one was thirty or forty bucks a box. The big if there's a big one that's like about two three hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's. Rebellion. But it's, I think so. I'm going to have to double check on it before I go and announce my knowledge incorrectly. Because the last couple of rant casts, I've been wrong. I, and I'm going to come back to that when I get to Andor. So, Armada, that's it, Elviler. You are uh, correct. Uh, yeah, like, I went to a board game shop, and it was fucking expensive. Pardon my French. It was... Armada, it was, I thought that was... A, it was isn't there a Star Trek Armada? Or I'm thinking something totally different. I'm pretty sure it was Armada. Hold on, I can I can fact check this on my fact check on the Rick cast. Um, let me check. Yeah, because I can I can double check. Well, listen, like I could do a weekly uh, uh, stream where it was just me correcting stuff that I. And it was the box set, right? It wasn't like it wasn't like we make mistakes. Single pieces. So if you're getting a core set, it's two hundred and eighty-seven dollars, I believe. Yeah. See. Yeah, it's when it's two hundred, it's like okay, if it's an awesome game, you can really... get it cheaper somewhere for about one hundred and fifty. Yeah. But like a lot of people sell it if you want it now, like in store. Yeah. I was gonna say this thing doesn't look like it's gonna come out, which is too bad. But if it does, did come out but didn't go retail, that's guaranteed scalper territory. And People that's gonna charge like five times. And that's what I'm saying is like it's I I kind of feel. This is kind of one of those things where we're putting and granted a business has to make money. But this yeah. is when if you if you watched our earlier rank casts uh, <clears throat> before. Um, I wonder how it's going to affect the Avalon Hill Discord. Are all the hero sleep channels going to disappear? I I don't think so, because there's always talk about the old game. Yeah, I mean, like if they're 10 years down. There's the line, a fan base for it. Justify it again. Like, listen, let's OK, we'll <laughs> start small. People were saying, well, what if the tiles were like cardboard? Or something. Of course, then people would be angry. They'd be like, "What is this?" But let let's get like let, that goes back to my other question. How how popular right now? Not back then. How popular now is HeroScape? Supposedly, they say the online presence is like eight times bigger than HeroQuest, and I don't know how big. I mean, HeroQuest is like maybe like I two really or hope they like got that correct because, like I they, said, if you're looking at it the, it's all bots, guys. Sorry. Look at the. Ooh. I mean, like we're looking at our 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 picture here, and they've got five days to get to eight thousand backers. And like I said, the uh, I mean, according to money price tag fails, but yeah, but the price tag just isn't enough for eight thousand people now, to go whoa. What what if somebody says, oh well, we're in a recession and it's inflation, and 
Okay, but that that's the excuse for a lot of people nowadays. Well, okay, look at me. This is my opinion on that, right? And for me, inflation is about 7% at this point, right? Even if we are in a recession and there's inflation, like uh, a board game that was like, what, once $130 doesn't need to go up $300. That's still greedy. Like well, that's that's inflation plus recession plus I need to make more money. And I should have, sorry, this is my fault. I should have looked at Board Game Geek before we did this to see like, what did you get in the original set? Which is like that's true. Uh, oh, Hero Escape: Rise of the Valkyrie, I think, is what it was called. So 2004. Like, what did you get in that set? Because this is a self-contained game. Yeah. Like, you could be starting from scratch. Well, and the other thing is, okay, so it's only been 10 years. It hasn't been like 30 years. So, for all we know, like most of the Hero Escape like fans still have their sets, and so they're like, why do I need to buy this? And I also think that if you're yeah, selling new people involved. If you're selling to a smaller market, because I feel like collectors, like collect, or, yes, collectors, painters, stuff like that are big. They're, yeah. they're, they're big guys. Because what I understand, HeroScape is dominant, dominated by people that collect. They got to have everything. They got to paint everything. Well, I'm more thinking of like, you got to get new people. in. Like if you're getting a like a, into a Warhammer type of situation. Exactly. Yeah. Those people will probably play two to five hundred for a board game. Yeah. They're like, yo, that's but, a big deal. Like, Go for it. Oh, like, new one's out. Gotta have it. How many people you're wanting? Eight thousand people to 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 buy this, right? And I don't, or a smaller number to buy multiple copies. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no way I would buy. It. It's like, oh, here's a Christmas present for four of my friends. Like I said, a lot of these are well done. Yeah, but people were even saying, hey, you could use these for Hero Quest too. Yeah, so I I Not don't. I can spend two hundred fifty bucks for yeah a couple miniatures. I would say you could probably get. I'd say if you knocked it down to two hundred, it'd be more reasonable. Yeah. I to me it's it's like once it's the price and two, I've never really found that releasing your new products, all of your new products, as like a backer project, I've never found that ethical. Um, because it's it's one thing to release something that you find unsure but passionate about, to let the fans decide whether or not they want to release. Question, going along that line. Do you think that if they just brought this to like Target, that people would buy it for this price? No, no. But at the same time, I don't think that charging two hundred fifty dollars and saying, "Well, we'll let the fans decide whether or not they want to pay for it," um, because ten to one, there are copies already being made, or there's at least a demo unit somewhere because they have stuff to show. Yeah, because I'm sure. Well, they've shown actual videos, like Chris Nato and Van Ness have done. Yeah, so it's not all computer generated. So I've mean, invested some money. In somebody's being somebody's gonna have this. I mean, they have to have a failed product somewhere yeah. that they have for show. Lock it but, in the vaults for ten years and come back yeah. and try it again. So I would say I, I feel bad that I mean I'm not saying that they would do this, but I can just imagine someone sitting there going, "Well, I guess the fans just don't care. I guess they're just a bunch of cheap skates. They don't want this." And like, we're also not right off. We're also not important to ship to Quebec. Yeah. yeah. How hard is it to print an English and a French booklet together? Yeah, Someone's going to say, well, no, you got to format it. It takes a long time. I don't know. It's, it sounds easy to us. It's like, I know that you can prototype like a board game, like through like Board Games Maker. And yes, they're doing it like with the cheapest possible materials in China somewhere, some sweatshop. <laughs> I mean, hey, you're supposed to be the positive. You're supposed to be the positive guy. Well, listen, I don't know for sure if it's really a sweatshop, but I'm just imagining like, how do they keep the prices so low? Like, I don't want it. Well, that's where that's see that's where I'm going with this on here, right? Yeah. They make a demo unit. They ask people to pay for it, yeah. and they cover their costs. I mean, making they could 3D print these. I'm pretty sure. The, yeah. This, this might be totally justifiable. Maybe they're taking a loss on this. Maybe it costs even more to maybe this, from what we know. But I just feel like, but still, they have to expect people to want to pay See, for it. See, and Elvira makes a big point here. It's not even just the book. It has to be reprinted. The box cover, everything needs to be reprinted in French in order. Well, to there's a way around that, too. Ship. So with Mage of the Mirror, they've got the box, and then they've got like just a cardboard slip cover that goes over it that has like alternate text. So, yeah, but they've got to print that, and they got to fold it, and they got to, you know. I mean, if somebody's them. paying for it, why not? Yeah, like it's like a lot of the French and the English. Okay, so, I don't know. Like I said, it's, it's I'm not the, the, I'm not the big business guy, but having yeah. some some business sense, I would say like 
this seems a little steep. Yeah. I mean, so somebody, somebody but, there made the decision, and it just looks like it's not working. So how could they have done it differently? But then again, make a smaller box. Like I said, this has your. It also has the have Avalon Hill tag on it too. So yeah, it's all over it. So I, I want to. Sorry for them. Yeah, They're I will. Gonna, I mean, they are part of this. T- Once again, the the businesses are together. Okay, yeah. so I I want to say this: they are part. They are all part of that. Hey, Nixius, welcome, welcome to the new Rantcast podcast. Yes, the Rantcast podcast. Rantcast podcast. Just remember that we are um, Put it on a t-shirt. I, you know, hey, it's podcast t-shirts. It's mm-hmm. it's Hasbro and Avalon Hill. Yeah. So talking about HeroScape here, we can't just just blame both. But I I think that. They're they're a big enough company that if they wanted to release something small, they could do a temporary release. Um, and like I said, HeroQuest had pretty decent pieces, right? Yeah. Um, I think they kind of went all out for this to see how many people would back it. Because these pieces look really good. I mean, from the previews that I'm looking at, they look really yeah. good. So well, with HeroQuest, I think with the, with the photos they took, like the actual pieces looked better than the photos. The only problem with that was some people got their sets and like the pieces were broken. See, and that's and another stuff. big thing. It's like glued like, weird. Yeah, so I like, you know, you, you never know what you're looking at in the picture either, too. So I, I once again I'm, I'm but, I mean kinda... there's there's videos where they've played with them and they look fine. Yeah. But so, I mean for all we know, they're just like they threw away and Well, there should be a video here somewhere. Yeah, I mean, there's the demonstration. See? You can take a look without the sound. I've this game before and I think it looks good. We skip a little bit. Yeah. See there. Like I said, if you guys need it blown up a little bit more, we can do that. You think those are metal prototypes that are painted to look like plastic? Um, well, because if it's a personalized demo unit, they can have it crafted a little better. But that's just me. See, there's our guys right there. These guys help make HeroQuest a success. Here they are with this product. They're all proud of it and everything. And it's like, oh, man, guys. Like I said, I have no real problem with the fact that they have HeroScape in general as it's yeah. as itself. It's the fact that I'm not worried. My this, thing this is the fact that this has become a regular thing, right? Is that having having people back everything for a release and they that have be a, the model for every yeah that, that being released as a model for things, right? Yeah. So, um, like I said, it's not a uh, demo unit. It's probably 3D printed, yeah, because it looks really good. I mean, like. I have never, like I said, I don't own a lot of board games, and like unless you're like paying three to five hundred dollars for one, they usually don't have personal personalized handcrafted. If they're if they're like uh, making in mass for something, I have a lot of cheap um, games. Warhammer but... usually does that. They'll they'll do like really well done. Well, at least the ones that I've been shown. See, this is plastic terrain. Like, so if they left out those discs and just gave you like the files to three D print them, of course not everybody does it. Or make it out of foam, make it out of yeah, but board or something. If that's plastic. what you're getting, I can understand kind of the price because a lot of that's per- looks like it's personally done. So like, yeah, and painted. yeah, not a lot of it's done with a huge machine, but it could be like I said, it could be 3D printed, and then it could be like I don't know, it could be dipped. I don't yeah, know much like about a, the the 3D printing. Like an airbrush goes across the top. yeah. Maybe a, a glaze layer. I don't know. Like so, this is all speculation for me. Uh, as yeah, far as that's, I'm not, I'm not much of a, a pro on on how how things like are pretty printed in the or factory anything. And we spied on them, yeah. But, yeah. but if it's a lot easier Those to those figures are pretty print. good size too. Yeah, they are. They're they're a nice size. They're I like think gargoyle they're size. So and they've got that. I'm not sure if those walls are part of the original game. Of course, there's like trees and stuff too. Let's skip a little bit. The dice are pretty simple. Let's see if they introduce any more. Um, but. They got specialized cards, so they got to get a special die cut for that. But it looks like, like I said, this is not the HeroScape, saved HeroScape telephone. But we're just <laughs> talking about the situation. No, I yeah. And I like again, I feel bad for the people that all in all about this uh, to, that worked hard for people that are watching. Do you want? Do you think it's worth the two hundred fifty bucks? Like that's the shipping big thing. is included. They did so, say that, and shipping is included. If yeah. you think that's the case, then I'm, I, you know, I might be with you on it. But at the same time, I also feel that um, because you know, Kurgan's brought it up. Um, you know, Avalon Hill is pretty big on, or not Avalon Hill, not just Avalon Hill, but uh, Hasbro is pretty big on funding projects, a lot of projects mm-hmm. uh, as backer projects. Yeah. And oh, you know, it's not like they're going to be hurting for money. I mean, they've got like other things in the fire, other areas in the fire. Clearly, I've put in most of 
development work already. They have all the 3D models done and gameplay skins are plans. They have made a huge investment. It seems like all the work would be a waste if it doesn't fund. See, and that's what I'm thinking is yeah. that I think that when they do this, they usually probably redo the work. Like they get everything ready to go and they have things set up. They have a demo. Right. I'm guessing this is a demo unit. So somebody's going to get this if it doesn't work and they're going to say, oh, well, this was for our HeroScape thing that didn't work out but i'm gonna keep it like you know like yeah. it, like when i worked at gamestop there was things i kept there that like yeah. you know so if you're friends with one of these guys you go over to his house hey you gonna, play you gonna see some never things that never got released check it out yeah so just in a plain cardboard box Here it is but um it was like with that reva light lightsaber right oh yeah they, i'm sure somebody's got that somebody's got the the original demo but it, they didn't mass make it because nobody wanted to fund it and they just refunded the money. I can't imagine that they have 250 or at least 1,000 already already done. Look how big that figure is. So That's like solid plastic. It's huge. That's like one of those dragons, like the Reaper dragons that you got to assemble. But like I said, if these have weight to them, if these pieces have weight to them, if, they're, if like they what, look this good, $50 figure. I would probably understand it because stuff like this doesn't get handcrafted or get this personalized anymore it's yeah. like i said you've seen my star wars I, i've showcased my star wars figures like my star wars pieces well and they, they were fit on a card table. they're they're breaking down like you said they have like, like a paint mold on them oh yeah, yeah from from like years of just neglect yeah. you need to soak those in like uh some detergent and scrub them yeah i, I just it's they have it's, had I mean, a I've long bought, list of... bought old games that are just really gross and cleaned them up <laughs> Really gross. really gross, man. But yeah, so this is what you're. But that's me. Like, yeah. if you're buying a new product, you you want it to stand the test of time, especially if you're paying that much for it. You want to customize it but, yourself. Um, my my biggest thing here, and like I said, the thing I'm talking about is they they do this a lot. You get those two big orange figures. Well, you um, would if, if it gets funded. My my next question is is do do people find this? a good business model or a bad business model? Because I'm not huge on having almost every big well, big idea backed. I never backed like a fundraiser like this until HeroQuest, and I was very reluctant to do so. Like, I had a lot of people telling me, oh, yeah, this is how they do it. You know, I, I like, I know people that they have, like, just dozens of Kickstarters that they they just are funding all the time. It's like, really? Like, I, I, w I would rather just buy a product straight away and not have to like worry oh it's not gonna not gonna get made or i don't know right. i guess it gives people a feeling of ownership like i made that happen like this is for the fans by the fans you know kind of thing but yeah it seems like i said there's a little a little bit it seems a little bit greedy especially if it doesn't go to retail yeah it's um... i mean i have a very strong sense that if this got funded it would go to retail like, I feel like that's the direction they're going. Well, that's... that's they have on Hill board games for now, but it's just not going to get back. That's so the thing is... is no it, one will see it. I was going to say, would it actually... Um, how many of these backer things do actually go to retail? Because Hero, you said HeroQuest did, right? I think HeroQuest is a rare exception. Most so, of the HasLab stuff, it just... That's it. This is an exclusive, limited-time, collector, hardcore fan product. Like a $500 lightsaber. Or you know, a uh, four hundred dollar. What was it? Jabba sail barge, the katana. That was the first one that I heard about that succeeded. It was like three, four hundred dollars, and it was Jabba sail barge, and it had like a couple figures inside it, but it was huge. And everyone was like, "Oh man, these dream projects! They're funding you know nerd dream projects." And that was the big deal. But yeah, how many of these can you afford to? I follow if you can burp has. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining the new Rantcast. Yeah, thanks for podcast. following the Rantcast, guys. Podcast. I appreciate it. Don't forget the podcast part. Yeah. Because there are other Rantcasts up. Burp to keep my follow. I'm leaving that one up to you, bro. It's the noise canceling. Yeah, I was about to say, the noise canceling will get rid of it. So, yeah. We, not, uh, we might lose you. What are we, uh, a couple of trained monkeys here? We're just going to do what you say, like... I mean, yeah, I can, but it's going to, the noise canceling is going to kill it. I mean, it's, oh, you're not going to hear it. Now you got a sub. You got to gift a sub. So those are the rules. I, I don't make them, but it's enforcing.
That's what he agreed to. You saw that, didn't you? Oh, okay. Sweet. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's about all you're gonna get. We're just like just rumbling. <laughs> oh, no, this this is not a <laughs> social stream. Yeah, I might lose you. But thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining. Rick, yes, the belt, yes, yes, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is gonna this is getting weird real quick. But that's what you get on the Rick Gas podcast. But anyway, well, the the big part about it was I <laughs> I feel that um, because now Weiler said that people build entire businesses around this model. Yeah, like it, the he doesn't like it, razor. but it seems to be effective. Otherwise, they 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 wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it if it didn't make money. It didn't so, work. Most of the time, because we've talked about the failures. I um, I don't know. Like, there's a tons of business models that work, right? And I feel like we, like people walk past you in New York and they'll bump into you or still try to sell you CDs because their business model works, and they'll they'll force you into a violent scam if you end up taking the CD. I mean. I just because so like it works doesn't it, mean it's ethical. Is what like saying. that's what I'm saying. It's like a little shady, it, a little scummy. I think we kind of. I think a lot of people miss the ethical points to it, yeah. right? Is because it's is it yeah. is it good? Is it ethical? Does yeah? Does it work? Yes, it works. Yeah, but it's like the burp for subs thing. I mean, yes, it is a business model. You know, burp subs. You're sitting there. You're sitting there in your hot tub, <laughs> and you're like, okay, burp for sub, and it's just like it's oh, a man. follow. It's a follow. Pretty soon, or sub follow, yeah, whatever. Yeah, pretty soon, you know, you're eating, you know, beans. You're 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 gulping down, you know, broccoli. Farting in a jar. You're sick. Selling your bath water. Your doctor's telling you, listen, you've got to stop this now, or you will die. And then you gotta you gotta stop doing it. It starts it starts with a burp and ends with farting in a jar. Pretty soon, so yeah, to folks. Yeah, there was. I'm not going to get into it. You can look it up if you want to. Don't look it up at work, but there is. <laughs> They had a certain business model on their stream, and it was it was it was making money. It was making money, but it was not good for a person's health. And well, who are you talking about? Nobody. <laughs> also, hey, wait. Since not we, the person you're thinking of. The there's since, another person. Since we moved over, there's a to, streamer to this podcast channel, and this podcast channel isn't affiliated. We're so affiliated, we, we don't have ads. On. There are no ads. So. Not ad breaks, really. See? So, okay, everybody. We're going to stay unpopular, all right? That's the deal. <laughs> stay unpopular. Seven, stay unpopular. seven or six followers. Just, yeah, just below. We're going to have to I'm gonna have to ban a couple people just to keep it under that threshold. Oh. I'm kidding. Or am I? You don't know. On the Rick Gas Podcast. Um, yeah. This is... <laughs> that was the best part of the night was we had a guy come in and was like, hey... <laughs> you can keep my follow if you can burp. Dude, I'm like, we say rant cast too hard and it sounds like we're about to throw up. Because yeah. the, no, the noise can't be. Yeah. Unless, of course, it's got my. No, it's his microphone, so. It's yeah. Working. Yeah, you might hear. So, HeroScape. So, final thoughts on that? Or do you have I, to say? I like here. I like. What they did with it, I don't know if it'd be worth two fifty, maybe two hundred. But if that's what they're pricing it at, I think that's fine. Um, I just probably won't buy it, and I can understand why they're not going to probably meet eight thousand people in five days. If they do, fucking surprises me. At the at the end, to close out, I don't find the backer model very ethical. Only for the fact that um, there are products they could probably temporarily release, spend a little bit more money, still make a profit. Um, and not go around, you know, saying, well, we can only exclusively release this to people who pay two, three, four hundred dollars. Because there's and, other way, like they spend you know, money on market research to figure out, is this profit, is this going to be a profit? Based on my first impressions, and no offense, I'm going to bring Avalon Hill into this. No, based on my first impressions on how they market things, it doesn't seem like they do a good job. So they're doing something that, they're doing something that relies on people coming in to back them. And then releases their marketing in really weird ass areas. So like yeah, I, word of mouth on social media. I don't 
I don't know. Like like I said, I'm also a 30 year old guy who's kind of falling out of the trend. Oh, it's hurt there. Yeah. But like Twitter is now no longer going to be a very trendy place unless the Musk man can ch- change it up. But it seems like he's also making a very ethical decision, making giving you a paid model for Twitter. So I, I feel like that's kind of a shitty situation on its own. Not everything has to be uh you know, peasant free and premium paid. Yeah. Uh literally you're, you're gonna have a very small your right to speak shouldn't be paid. And I feel like Twitter, as crappy as it is, people should go on there and if it's if it exists, people should have the right to speak on there. And there was a news I'm I'm gonna kinda tr- trend off a little bit. There was a news article that was talking about how how curious the business model would be to pay social media to make social media a paid platform and i think it's really fucking evil to do so because now you're having people pay for their right to speak um because literally the reason you're paying is so that people can see what you say more so you can spout everything off your if you're on there for free spout everything off at the mouth more uh and then maybe it'll be like the youtube algorithm almost nobody will see you yeah. But if you're paying ten dollars a month, like yeah. you are everywhere else, you'll get noticed a little bit more. If you're paying twenty dollars a month, then your shit'll go on the top of the algorithm and everybody'll see you, and that's where it's going. And like the people yeah. are actually accepting us. They're like, Oh, it might be a, a curious business model, it'd be really cool. And this is where I come back to Elvila and say, Yeah, it may work, but is it ethical? Does it is it is it a cool thing to do? Because yeah. um it <laughs> Are they are they making it the same for everyone? It's how liberty dies, my friend, with thunderous applause. I mean, it really is. It well, because if, if you're a big corporation, you you can obviously get yourself known. You just grease the palms a little bit, and you can get like your, at this your, point, your I could just start a business where, like, you so know, you're just a regular you person. fart on camera, and if you pay the premium price, yeah. your biggest fart but, will be known on the top of my list. Yeah. I mean. I'm at this point where, like, you could do the stupidest shit and have people pay for it, and they'll still pay for it, and it's really okay. dumb. Like, where's your common sense? It's all about making money at the end of the day. By the it's time I pay shipping and exchange rate, it'll be almost 450 But they said the shipping well, no, no, no. was included. Yeah, the shipping, that's the part that I got wrong at the start. They said the shipping is included. Now, that where the shipping would still come in is if you're in one of the countries that are not covered by the Kickstarter thing. Are not covered in? I don't know. Well, like, let's say you're in Australia and they're not shipping to Australia. I don't know. Or Quebec. Let's say you're in Quebec and you don't get it. So you'd have to pay extra for somebody else to have it shipped to them and then back to you. And there may be tax, but the $249.99 is supposed to include the shipping. So it's not like 30 extra dollars shipping. Yeah, Elviler, I'm not sure where you're at. You don't have to say, but. Oh, and if Ona Nexus is still in chat here, thanks for following, man. We uh, we missed you. Who? Oni Nexus. Onixius. Onixius, sorry. Oni. Still called late for dinner. <laughs> hey, Z. He's a pretty cool guy. He played with us Hero Quest a couple times. Awesome. Yeah. International shipping to Canada, 30 bucks. Space Crusade. Ugh. Yeah, no. Hey, and thanks, Polsky. That's what I'm saying here is Getting that. the bots out. This is, I think this is our first bat, bot banning. No, it's our uh, second. There was another one. Oh, did. okay. Uh, anyway, yeah. Good. So, like, like I say, before, for you, it's four hundred and fifty bucks. I don't think that would be. Nice work, um, man. Keep it up. I don't think that would be very. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's worth it. At that point, if yeah. if, if you pay, can pay for shipping, it's two hundred fifty bucks. So, like I said, I don't think they're thinking about that. Um, I don't know if they really think about the well people in Canada either because they've got this. If, <laughs> it's a, if, it's, if it's a retail product, then you get bragging rights. Like, oh, I got it before anyone else, and I've got the. But there know, is no one else. And... If they if this doesn't get released, everybody buys it. They meet the eight thousand backers. Are they going to retail release it? Because they yeah, don't. Then I think so. Okay, that's what I'm saying. That's how Hero Quest was. Like, it's kind people, of up in the air. People got it. And then, like, one month later, the retail version came out. You know what they could do? They would even find this more acceptable. They could release this as a yeah. backer thing. If 8,000 people are met, they could at least tell people during the uh, during the announcement that they would retail release it, but in a basic version. Ah, yeah. So this is, like, the special edition. Stream is still skipping. Check. Well, 
restoring the bit for Ada Touch. I'm good for because we're not affiliate yet, so maybe we're not getting like the high tier. No, because my bit rate's at like five, six thousand. But yeah, we'll pay see. your pay your eight dollars. Okay. I'm glad I was never part of Twitter. Today. Try um, refreshing one more time, Mayor Polsky, just for me. It looks like, I mean, they, see, they talk about it the same way they talked about HeroQuest. They said exclusive figures. You get these two big, like, bug, bug rider monster guys. And so if it did go to retail, you probably wouldn't get those, but you get everything else. We had a tad bit of drop frames, but it's like 38. There's nothing. As long as we don't get the guy with the headphones and the, the <laughs> blue background, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. I used to be like, what the heck is happening? What is, who is this guy? All right, thanks for the feedback, Polsky. Yeah, we're just getting the bugs ironed out on the new uh, Rancast podcast. So because I should be at 720p, I should have no issues right now. So three thousand five hundred eighty-three backers, and they got to make like almost double that in five days. It's not going to happen. Sorry. No context. Need you to pick one, two, or three. Um, I'm gonna count to three. You just say one, two, or three. Ready? One, two, three, three. Ooh. Try again. One, two, three, three. Ooh. One, two, three. Say again. One. Three. One, two, three. Say again. One. one. All right. One. <laughs> That's the number of times we have to burp to keep us safe. <laughs> Look, man, we appreciate you. Yeah. But I, I can't. I'm not going to. If that's in Carmine under another name, I do, I do, I, I do belches, but I'm not a. You are on the wrong. The the my clown stream is on the strange bus. It's not here. <laughs> it's ASMR. All right, deal. Terran campaign and Starcraft Two. It is. Although I might prefer Zerg. I haven't done Starcraft Two in so long. All right. It's more of a Warcraft kind of guy. <clears throat> Warcraft Three. Yeah. Old make edition. Sure, just make sure you uh, disconnect your internet. Yeah, just make sure you play the old school one. Disconnect yeah. your internet before. Uh, well, It'll force you to update to the. Yeah, before they come up, come on down. They're like, "Oh wait, you're playing the old edition. No, we want to upgrade you to that." You just, you just hear someone pounding on the door, and they're just like, "Install." It's, this. it's Bobby Kotick. He's knocking on your door. Anyway, <laughs> you just force it down your throat. See if you like it. We don't do the old editions anymore. It's a remake. <laughs> Diablo 2, you want the remaster? You're going to you, get the remaster. You like it? So I was downloaded again. I had a hankering, but didn't know which campaign I wanted to start with. Done them all back to front, so hence the no context. Well, glad we could help. Yeah, Polsky. Yeah, another band. Yeah. We don't need social take, stream take growth. A, get out of here. Take a drink. Yeah, I, <laughs> see, I banned that not for mine, like, not too long ago. Right. Your soul well, growth strength right here. I think well, I'm gonna call a break here. I'm gonna grab a quick right. drink. We'll switch up topics. Do you have anything about Hero Quest before we leave? Hero Quest is in a good place, <laughs> and I'm really curious about the next expansion. I hope that this whole HeroScape debacle doesn't hurt their plans for future Hero Quest development. But I just want to say I'm not jealous of HeroScape. If it were to succeed, I'd be like, good for you guys. I don't feel bad, but I hope Avalon Hill can handle both. Yeah, I hope that this doesn't send a ripple effect through, and they say, "Well, you know what? Board games, nobody wants them, so shut off the funding." I understand they have to answer to Hasbro, yeah, but like I think that I have faith in Avalon Hill to be able to handle their own IPs at some yeah. point in time. They so seem, they seem like competent guys who love games. Yeah, and they seem pretty. They seem pretty. Uh, Best of luck. Pretty smart and skillful. So I, as far as uh, you know, Hasbro, their tagline always stands, where fans come first. This backer stuff is taken very literally. Fans come first in all regards. You pay for it, too. You pay to keep our projects alive. And I, uh... Yeah, so, you know, like, people are going to feel bad. Oh, man, we didn't support it enough. Oh. I feel like they take the estimate and they're like, well, it's going to cost this much Seems and we need like this many people estimate. or it just isn't going to work. So so if they had a smaller, less expensive pack. I feel like they should just have 
less give more time or have less backers. Yeah, something. It's like, like they weren't gonna take a loss on it. When they go to retail, they can make it up. Well, if they're not gonna retail, if they're not gonna retail it, then maybe have less people. If they are gonna retail it, this might this might seem reasonable. Not to mention the fact that this does look good. But I have seen projects done by Hasbro that you have shown me yeah. that have not gone to ground, and they've just well, they look bad. I like. like they all look bad. Yeah, they, it doesn't look they impressive. It's like, well, no wonder, too expensive. no wonder nobody wanted it. Well, and with this, it's like, I, I don't think they set it up to fail. Like, they go, oh, well, we know no one cares, so here, let me just run it. Well, you brought that up. So I did. I'm going to bring, bring that up for you. For really. yeah. So you were, you were saying that, you know, since HeroQuest kind of had its day, yeah. that maybe Avalon, or not Avalon Hill, maybe Avalon Hill, but I think Hasbro wanted to switch into a different direction. So to kind of give people... Um, some hope they released this going well if enough people back it you guys can go ahead and release it we won't go take it to retail but it'll kind of make the community happy and then we'll switch to something else we'll take you and we'll switch you to something else board game related but it won't be hero quest anymore we're going to take you into a different gear and if it doesn't well then we'll say well this stuff's too expensive to make nobody's backing it anymore let's go into a different direction so I feel like this is kind of the we're gonna switch into a different direction mode. Like we're 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 moving on. So Hero Scape becomes something different. Yeah. Because this is like the old Hero Scape. It's just unpainted. HeroQuest campaign was ninety nine dollars. Retail is something like one forty nine. If Hero Scape were to go to retail, would it be over three hundred dollars? Yeah, Hero Quest, you're right. Ninety nine ninety nine for the heroic tier and you got three uh two but see, that's what I'm saying. Four extra figures. Five extra figures. So the basic edition was more expensive? The retail version was one twenty five ninety nine, And it was, you got less. Yes. And then after the recession, they reduced it to one thirty five. dollars The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Although people say the build quality was slightly better, but only slightly. I mean, the box was like easier to open. Yeah. So are they expecting this to be a thousand bucks after it's done? Because like the can imagine being, build quality looks good. This would be like $300 probably. Like Jesus. I I don't know. Like I said, I'm glad I have Al Viler here because he's bringing up points I didn't even think about. But um, I don't know. Then, like I said, I feel like they may have wanted really? to switch in different directions. Because just like HeroQuest, like two months just goes by like that. And people are like waking up saying, wait, what? There was a campaign a year ago for this and I, I missed my chance to pledge. Marketing, dude. Oh, shoot. Like, I yeah. didn't see it on Twitter. I didn't see it in my email. Has anybody seen anything broadcasted for this on any platforms anything at all i i knew about it but that's only because i'm constantly like i'm i'm subscribed to avalon hill on youtube i'm subscribed to well yeah i get uh, yield in and um discord and, yeah so it's like i knew about it because i'm in the loop i'm like constantly monitoring it and because of hero quest fans discord people are always talking about it so they're like oh yeah age of annihilation and i'm like what the heck is this and so i had to look it up but yeah, if I'm if I'm a hero hero escape player, unless I'm on Twitter, I'm on a Haslab and going, hmm, I wonder if they're gonna reboot the game that I like. Like I wouldn't know about it. Only seen it on YouTube, Discord, and Twitter. And I mean, you know, what else are they supposed to do? Put it on like TikTok or Reddit or you know, have TV commercials? Who watches TV anymore, right? What's a TV, Grandpa? You know. But yeah, hero escape. It's like two months. To fund this thing like if they if they gave people like six months if they said instead of eight thousand backers like five thousand like what if they get really close like seven hundred or seven thousand one hundred backers would they go oh yeah it's enough or would they say nope we said eight thousand that's it done we're not gonna spend any more money on it yeah alviler i mean that's the thing the price probably would go up and you would get less but according to what they showed here, I mean, it's those two big orange figures that you wouldn't be getting. And I don't think it would go up like 100 bucks. It wouldn't double. But yeah, 300 is a lot. I mean, you wouldn't be paying for shipping. It's just in the store. Uh, the new Hero Quest is in store on store shelves now, but not like where I live. But I guess in some, like people have taken photos. It's like, okay, my local game shop, there it is. They've got boxes and boxes of Hero Quest. And the expansions. So. They haven't come right out and said that this would be retail if it was backed. But I think personally it would be. Because I think that's 
the direction all the Avalon Hill stuff is going. So that's not speaking for all the other HasLab stuff like the Ghostbusters and Power Rangers and all that. But yeah, it's a shame. Because if this was a retail product, yeah, I don't think I'd buy it for 300 But if it was like 200 maybe, you know, after I learned more about the game. Hellbiler says, we never hit the last goal for HeroQuest, but they still released it anyway. So maybe there's hope. Well, here's the difference, Hellbiler. So for HeroQuest, it was a million dollars is the minimum threshold to go into production. With the stretch goals, they were saying uh, four million to get those last two things, the Joe Manganiello pack and the extra gargoyle. And they got close. It was like 30 or 3.6 or yeah, it's 3.65 million. It was supposed to be 3.7, 3.9, four. So they were just a little bit off. With this, they're not saying 8,000 for all the extras. Like you could show that picture again. Um, there's like all these stretch goals after this. This is just for the minimum. This is just for the core set. So if they don't get 8,000 backers, in your head. it's not happening. You know what I mean? Like if they get like 15,000 more backers, you get another figure. They're also not giving you very much. I mean, with Hero Quest, yeah, it's like, okay, two extra figures for each tier, another set of dice, another quest book. Here it's like one figure. And yeah, the, the figures that they're offering are supposed to be like in game, they're like powerful characters. Okay, now hold on a second. It's a standard shipping handling to the to just United States included. Otherwise, sharing handling charges will be calculated time to check out. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay, I'll find oh, okay, okay. okay. So certain areas would pay more. So. so this has been going since the 1st of October. Yeah. Yeah, dude. October to November. To mid-November. So, yeah, barely. Not even quite two months. Like a month and a half. So it's short. Very short. So you're sitting there counting your pennies, and then you're like... Well, the other thing is, I don't know if this is really right to bring this up, but... During COVID, people were like, dang, I need something to do. Oh, I'll, I know. I'll get a board game and play it at home. This is awesome. You know? But now it's like people are getting out. Sunshine. People are always going to be like board game collectors. But yeah. I, I just feel like it's 8, a people is a big, it's a big jump. Yeah. Because most people are not going to buy multiple copies, right? Especially if they're thinking in their head, this is going to retail. I can't scalp it. I'll have one month to scalp it. And then people will be like, no. Because even if it is $400 in a store, a scalper is going to sell it for double. You know, or triple. They're not going to run away fortune. Don't be a fool. They're not going to sell it for just you know a dollar above. If it was seven nine nine five, then maybe. Yeah, yeah. If it, if they got super super close, it would be a shame. Like these guys would be on their knees, like begging, they're like, please, please, let us do it. <laughs> like, come on, here, here. I'll, I'll get. I got. I got twenty bucks in my wallet. Here, just there. It's good. <laughs> All right. I don't know. We uh, so closing off. Really tell us how. how thanks you feel. for joining, Elvira. And thanks, yeah, thanks for joining us, Elvira. Great um, stream. Like, tell us how you feel about Hero Quest Hero Escape currently at the moment. What you would think Avon Hill and Hasbro would do. Yeah. Um, if you think the backer business model is ethical and unethical, if you think it works, um, that's the whole point of the of the Rantcast podcast. We like to include your opinions. They're always welcome. Yeah. No matter if, you know, we disagree with them or anything, Our we're not. It's not the final. Word. Yeah. They're not, it's not the final word. We're just, you know, chilling with people having a conversation and we're not going to take your heads off for having something drastically well, different. Anyway, um, we'll be right back here. We're going to go ahead and take a brief break. Uh, and then we will go ahead and be back with some talk on Star Wars. Yep, we're gonna drink lots of pop, and we'll be just belting into the <sighs> just just tons of tons of uh, follows after that. All right, guys, we'll be right back. More more rank guests coming. Right. <laughs> Don't go away. Yeah. It's like that audio, everybody. Good stuff. The only podcast to be red cast, except for everyone else's. Everyone's doing a red cast in the world of red cast, the red cast podcast. Coming up, brother. I wonder how much of the noise canceling took that out. It's just, it's just a bunch of. Ch- <laughs>
what? What's wrong with him? Why is he about to puke? He's gonna, he's gonna hurl. He's gonna blow chunks. He's gonna puke. Ah, ah, ah. He's gonna, oh, he's gonna. Oh. Well, welcome back. We are, uh, we have returned. Sorry about the lateness here. It is officially 10.55 p.m. U.S. Central Standard Time. The and you're watching later than you think, Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> you're watching the Rankcast podcast. I am Josh, also known as the Strange Bus. Here's my co-host, Kurgan, also known as HeroQuest Fans. Yeah. And uh, you can... Oh, I forgot to change it over here, too. Yeah. But you can uh, re- find him at twitch.tv slash HeroQuestFans. That's twitch.tv slash HeroQuestFans. We're going to be continuing our rant here starting with some Star Wars. Ooh. Hey. Star Wars. I actually have some good things to say. Uh, uh-huh. Hey. Uh-huh. Positive. Yeah. Well. positive. Um, but let me go ahead and pull up the uh, article. And this or... is something you should see. Star Wars positive. And I've watched all of it. So we have a uh, we have Andor to talk about. We're going to talk about Andor first, and then go to six reviews. Tales of the Jedi. The so Antichrist, Star Wars, stories of George Lucas. So, as you can kind of see, you're getting kind of spoiled a little bit because you have just started to watch it. I watched half of one episode, and I would have watched more if my head wasn't killing me but this guy convinced me we had a long talk i'm very averse to star wars now i'm very timid about trying new things with star wars label on we're 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 he we're kind of like Mulder and scully on this at this point because i want to believe he wants to believe but cannot believe and i believe but i'm like i'm you know i have to have i have to see it you know Hey, you know what's out Polsky there. killed another bot. The yes. truth is out there. He's out so, there with the fly swatter. He's just like clobbering them. He's going to get them. Yeah. Look at him. Is the, the, the truck kill. Those bots are out to get the, the new account. Kill. What's the so, um So, so we're starting with Andor. Um, which Ashy and Andor. It's a new series on. Disney oh, Plus. I've already tried to. I've already tried to recruit him. So. We'll start here. If you've got gonna... Disney Plus, which I don't, you might be able to watch it. There's 10 episodes that are out right now. We'll just go ahead and pop I mean, I, I, I've i always said that of the Disney Star Wars, Rogue One was my favorite. I'm not saying I thought Rogue One was a great movie. I'm just saying it was my favorite of... Your mind tricks won't work to convince stuff. me. Okay, hold on. So I'll start with my thing, and then we'll kind of... I don't blame you for being skeptical. I'm still skeptical yeah. myself. Okay. I have so, about, what, four episodes, and then I'll judge whether series is worth my time. So when I started, and I'm actually bringing this here. I'm going to see if I can remove those subtitles. Yeah, I'm not going to get a strike. I don't... I, at this point, I don't care. So we're not going to... We shouldn't get a strike, but who cares? Anyway. This is about Star Wars? Okay. Yeah, so... When I first showcased this trailer, um, I was telling people, why make a character based on Rogue One? I mean, Rogue One was a decent enough movie. Who really needs an uninteresting character? I mean, Very generic. Guy. And Cassie and Andor was the guy who ends up dying. Like, I mean, do we really need That's extra they, crap? They kill a character off and they give us the prequel of their backstory. But now, hold on. <laughs> Most of the time that Disney's done this, or the, it's been kind of like filler and fan service and whatever, like this character runs into Darth Vader, or he runs into so and so from the Coward super young. And I don't know if I've run into like a young, well, yeah, in Kenobi they do it, but um, this show is less Star Wars um, and more of a crime drama, just a, a, a full on crime drama um the only thing that it will tell you it's star wars is what you're watching right now it's just the environment the ships this is very everything. star wars heavy yeah ships the um, and uh, you will it will it will it will scream it will scream seven. star wars in certain areas like like i said there's the scenes here with mon Mothma that will tell you 
Hold on. I'm gonna break it down because I'm gonna forget if I have to switch topics. Hold on. It will it will tell you um there it's Star Wars in very subtle notes, just by the environment around it, the weapons, everything. And then it will it will switch and give you something um completely different. Like the beginning of the first episode doesn't fill you with anything else other than the fact that this guy is looking for his sister. He ends up accidentally killing some folk. And now he's on the run. So I feel oh, like John Wick. I just <laughs> I, car, I, mean, a I forgot to loop. I got so enthralled I forgot to loop this. Sorry. Yeah, the next Rick. Yeah. Um, but you know, it doesn't get as heavy as the trailer implies. Yeah. Uh, there was it looked like a Rogue One part two. Yeah, but this this part, um when I when I sat and watched the first three episodes. The only thing that screamed Star Wars to me was they were planning to invade a rebel bunker. Um, it focused more on his childhood. It focused a lot on other characters. It did amazing character building. Um, the ISB was a Star Wars part about it, but they brought it. That's the crime drama ish part. What's ISB? Uh, the Imperial Security Bureau. So um, this takes place in between three and four, of course. It's the, the five years, kind of the beginning of the battle. Yes, yeah, so it's. The Imperial or the Empire is at its heaviest right now. Um, Coruscant is a very dark place, and like every time they switch over to it, you can feel it. There's a sense of dread everywhere, and they don't make it dark. They don't. They're not showing stormtroopers kicking people and making them evil and stuff like that because they are goofy in like four, five, and six. So they just it's a single file line where they're walking. There's a very like, and I'm I'm not trying to sound offensive. There's a very Nazi implication. That they used in the original trilogy, yeah, right? That was always so the intention. They they imply it very heavily here. Um, the guys that you're seeing here uh, in the trailer, uh, they're a security force for the planet that Andor was on. They aspire to be like the Empire and end up regretting it. Like so, there are scenes where you'll see some some civilians accidentally trip over an, an Imperial officer, not a stormtrooper, and then going to prison. It's kind of like a. Um, like I said, it's 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 to me it's more of a like a dark drama than it is just Star Wars. And it's because when we think of Star Wars, we think of like swashbuckling adventure, like here. Well, and they replay the same shit. And they battles. try to they try to in they try to heavy hand certain characters. I haven't run into anybody familiar except for Saw Gerrera, and he's a newer character in the series. But that's it. They they make every character very new and very open. So you don't really need to watch Star Wars to watch this. It's a, just a sci-fi crime drama. And it's you sit down and anybody can watch it. But let me ask you a couple questions from the skeptic point of view, if you're ready. Sure. Okay. So is this stuff the type of show that's made for non-fans? Like I said, man, anybody can watch it. They're, like I said, like, like I said, with Kenobi, they had, you know... I could have my wife sit down. She go, she go. So, where does this take place again? And I'm like, okay. And I have to sit down and tell her like where in the storyline this takes place, what's going on. But if I don't know any of that lore, you know, who the characters are, like this doesn't have previous characters installed. It doesn't have to explain to you parts of the storyline. It's, it's a like, I didn't have to like the reason I wasn't interested at first was it because it was an un, a character I didn't think was important. Yeah, and that's what sells it now. I don't. Yeah, yeah, you're on. Go for it. Is it? It is a character that was technically he meets his end at one point in time, but that's what brings life I think to the show is the fact that it's it's not a bunch of familiar faces that are famous and always have to have a story. It's not a Skywalker film. It's not, you know, like I said, that's the only character I've run into and that's Saw Gerrera. That's it. Yeah. And it's a bunch of people who you'll find people who favor the empire. You'll find people who dislike the empire, but won't take action. There are people that will are killing innocent people because they believe in fighting the empire, but they feel like it needs, like they need to do, they need to do good, but they're misunderstood. So it's not like, you know, your typical rebellion hero. There are, there's a character who literally wastes. There's a guy who's like, "Well, I'm afraid to fight," and he's like, "Okay, we'll get out of my way," and he just blows through the dude, just to kill a bunch of imperial so people out of bunch moral of, ambiguity. Yeah, there's a bunch of moral ambiguity, and it makes you like hate even good characters. 
like I said, it's the character building. It's something I think Disney has been missing from a lot of um, points. And it goes to, you know, it gets to my next point, which is, I think, on uh, where I'm going to go. I'm going to gun for Star Wars theory here next. But oh, man. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm withholding Polsky, my thoughts before, Polsky, until I actually see more of it. You guys, like I said, you guys, if you guys have questions, I'm, I'm free to answer them. It's the fact that we're at 10 episodes and I cannot tell you one of them that I fully disliked. Um, the, I think, it's one of those shows where the first two episodes are a waste of time or what would you say? No, they're just moderate. Like I said, like there's, there's not, is some people, or were, or some people were blown away by episode six. And the only thing that like screamed to me on episode six was it was just the finale of what episode three, four and five brought you to. And it was good. It Is was it good. like they have a plan or are they making it up every episode? No, it's just not endless filler. Like it's not garbage. Like okay. there's to me, there's not a part of, of the show to me that just feels like it wants me to go to sleep. Like Kenobi had an episode where I was like, oh, this is like, this can be a dredge. Like you had to land on that. He landed on that one planet that was like a gambling planet and he walked around and I was like, come on, let's get to the point. They just wanted to show up. And then they got to a point and that point was good, but like he takes forever to get somewhere. And like, there's only five episodes. Let's fucking move to it. Like this has 10 episodes and it takes its time to build on oh, each character. Like each character so is a Skywalker where it's like, boom, boom, they're on another planet. They're doing it's not, crazy. It's not a rip off of Kyle Katan. I look, man, me and you agree on a lot of things besides like maybe the sequels. Yeah. I am faithful to Kyle Katan in many ways. I love Kyle. Katan. He is not a rip off. Maybe an inspiration, if anything. But yeah. there's nothing about him that puts on a shoulder pad and <laughs> Has has any so, force sensitivity? So Cash Andor is not a weak sauce, Kyle Katarn. No, saying. he had no previous Imperial experience. He's just a thief. The guy is literally a thief. That's all he is. He's an asshole. He's not a guy with a lightsaber and a few questions. No. At the beginning of the story, the guy is literally just a thief looking for his sister, and literally nobody likes him. Like he goes home after 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 killing somebody. And he's going home to try to clear, or try to try hide and clear his name, and nobody wants, nobody wants him. I think the one close part about him is he does carry a briar pistol, so he has an he has inspirations to Kyle Katana. See, and I listen. I if you're if you're holding back spoilers, don't worry because I don't care. But I'm holding back to other people. But oh. like like I said, the the but that's I oh, forgot yeah. about that until I saw it in the trailer. Like like I said, if if there were episodes came out at the start. So they yeah. expected you to get through almost like a I'm like, feature like they don't I think that's more of just the fact that they're they're trying to bring that weapon into Star Wars more, maybe. Because it's it's a one time shot. Yeah. But like I said, if you ever see him doing anything else, like if you see him carry a like 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 I said, the dude dies. So I, I don't know, maybe they inspired things for him. Well, and as a fan, like I'm not the type of fan where I feel like, oh man, I I love Jedi Knight so much that you've got to like tell me it's canon again, please. <laughs> like you've got to put it on screen and say, yes, all that stuff happened. Like I can still treasure it, but I'll treasure whether it's canon or not. Yeah, but I don't care what Pablo Hidalgo says. I mean, I didn't care what George Lucas said, so why would I care what Disney has to say? <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy's like. I'm I'm sorry, that's not canon. No, he's not a ripoff. Like I said, if anything, I think he's not took, Andar, He's not. I think they so. took things from there and put it into his character, but he he has he doesn't have the same mannerisms. I don't think he doesn't. Nothing about it screamed Kyle Katarn, except for the fact that he carries the same weapon at the beginning. But you think all Kyle Katarn did was he just took a briar rifle and just sawed the barrel off, and that was his. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, they technically had Modified. briar pistols back then. Or in the, I thought it was another weapon that he modified. Oh, it's like a B one eighty nine Briar Blaster. I, I don't know. That it has changed some of the Jedi Knight stuff. Like remember Jarek? He was supposed to be just a human that had he was blind and he used the force to see, but then they turned him into an alien that doesn't have eyes and so some stuff has changed. Yeah, like like I said, man, I don't like Disney either. I don't think this is like a change recurrence. And like I said, this that's where I'm going into this, if right? If you do anything right, that's a start. And it's kind of you know, do. So, uh, but what I'm getting at is there are things that if I completely hate Star Wars, I'm going to end up just hating it. I like and I hating, hating all of it. And I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take 
the good parts that they introduce. And like this is where it goes. Well, as a fan, I mean, if you if you haven't just written the whole thing off completely, you want to like praise them when they do it right, right? Give them good feedback. Yeah, you're so, not just hanging on because you're so loyal. Like, well, it's Star Wars, and I have to like it. It's like if you do Star Wars wrong, I'm gonna hate you, and if you do it right, I'm gonna right. say, but right track. I'm a, so I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell everybody the same thing I told him. <laughs> Find somebody who has a Disney Plus account and just watch a couple episodes. Allegedly. I can't really tell you that because the they, like he still gets into fights with stormtroopers or not really stormtroopers. He gets in fights with security officers that aren't the Empire that inspire to be the Empire. There's an entire episode focused on an Imperial prison sequence that doesn't really aspire to be traditional Imperial like protocol, but the way they did the prison sequence was really good. Um, well, we're talking about a, a galaxy-spanning civilization. So just because we haven't seen it or in the movies doesn't mean it didn't exist. The so guy they can kind of make up whatever they want. The guy you're looking at half the time um, is a is a rebel radicalist. I mean, like it's like I'm saying it's it's not about whether or not it's Star Wars or not. It's the fact that I can watch it and forget that it is Star Wars half the time. There are things about it that say it's Star Wars. But it's like watching something new and not fucking hating every bit of it. How would you compare this to The Mandalorian? But The Mandalorian is... Okay, so you're not picking up what I'm putting down. The, the, the Mandalorian has hints of it that scream previous Star Wars movies. Fan service. It's directly linked. I don't really have to get to my next point or I'm just going to confuse the shit out of people. <laughs> like, so... Yo. There are bits of fan service recently and I think that's what's been fucking up Disney culture... Very when they started it, they, they just play towards, it safe. Yeah, desperate yeah. attempts to get our attention. So they've been playing it safe, and they've been doing a lot of fan service. This doesn't have a lot of that in here, not yet, anyway. That's, the ten episodes I've seen, fine by me. They've, like I said, the only reason Mon Mothman's in there is because she actually has a role to play. Okay, and her entire time, she's been getting uh, either verbally abused, or she's had a really rough time handling everything, every in every scene that she's been in. There's no, like, she stands up for the Republic. Nothing. She's been getting hit on both sides by the good guys and the bad guys. Yeah, because the Republic is still around. Like, everybody fucking hates her right now. I mean, the Empire is the Republic. In the so, States. the story they're telling her is the fact that how does she get from there to where she is in, what, Return of the Jedi? Yeah. And Rogue One and all that other crap. And, like, her story in this is more interesting than uh, since I've seen her in Return. So well, she had a very thin character. So she's not just standing around talking; she's actually playing a part in a movie. Oh, okay. And like that's that's what I'm saying is like, and she's playing a part in a drama. It's not like, well, oh, I'm going to give you a million credits to go and steal the Death Star plans, or I'm going to do this for you so you can gather a million rebel troops. It's yeah. I need to talk to my husband and my daughter, and my daughter's a verbal bitch, and my husband's beating the shit out of me. Sorry. That had nothing to do with Star Wars. Hmm. And then, right. on the other hand, I'm sticking up for the Imperial, or I'm trying to fight the Imperial bureaucracy, which everybody's agreeing with, and I'm the person who's standing up right now. And the only person I can turn to is an old friend, but literally, I'm on the political side of things, and everybody fucking hates her. So it sounds like they're taking, rather than taking well-established characters and ruining them, or... I mean, they only have... They're taking underdeveloped or non-developed characters and just going with that. Like, yeah, they only have really one or two real, like, which is characters. I've been saying that for years, that this is what I would want them to do. Rather than taking a this character guy, in love and, like, swerving them... This them. guy you see, like, just now, is a guy who aspires to be part of the Empire, and nobody wants him to be in the Empire. Every Imperial officer has turned him down he actually fucks up the entire case he's in and has the empire um take control of his planet unintentionally and then loses his entire career so like based off the fact that he's trying to solve a murder that andor caused so he absolutely hates the guy Christ is trying to solve the case is told to ignore it by his superiors ends up going after them and then the empire takes notice and is like well since you decided to take this in your own hands and fucked it up the empire has to clean it up for you and you all are losing your jobs let me ask another question about this Not what to derail it but 
there's been a trend, I think, in a lot of fiction to just go like the grim dark way. Like it's so it's so dark and morally ambiguous. It's almost a self parody. Okay, what's the what's the traditional grim dark way of Star Wars lately? Well, it's not. But I'm just saying. Would you say that this story is doing that, or do you think it's doing just the right amount of darkness? So imagine like, like uh, you're not like you're not like laughing at it. You're like, oh man, this is this is Watchmen. Imagine is... like a, a like a like a like an actual like really good like crime drama from the '90s or mid 2000s mixed in with this. Characters aren't like it's not all about your evil yeah, or well, good. No, or yeah, that. it's not about black and white, and it's not about taking. Um, it's not about taking a draft trap. Yes, there's a goal. There's always going to be a goal. There's always going to be a Star Wars ish like plot in there. You're going to know it's there. There's hope. But like I said, they actually have character building and they have a plot in between. And it's it's more than just that. Like I said, with um with Rogue One, yes, Jin Erso was like kind of a uh, an outcast. They said it at the beginning, and that was it. And after that, she became the hero, and yeah. she had to go out and steal the Death Star plan. She and, cried a little bit over her yeah, dad. I mean, yes, it she had to over her dad, but wasn't a melodrama. It was a it was a simple plot. Yeah, here there's a lot more to be told. Um, like I said, there's multiple characters are being told something, and they're not just saying, "Oh, well, they were once bad, but now they're going to be good." And yeah. he, you know, this is what they're going to do, and they're all going to meet together and give each other a hug and do something somebody's gonna die and then you're gonna cry over it the format allows them that space to develop even with a tv show man like we've had bad tv shows of course and like so the the big thing is is you also have and like i said i could be overdoing it right but i also explain things really horribly sometimes and like i said the best way you can experience it is by maybe i would say take the first three to six episodes it's a 12 episode show get about about a quarter to halfway in between it and you'll and you'll understand because every character they're showcasing has a background every character they're showing here has a detailed background it's not just andor well polsky's question i i think you've pretty much addressed what he was saying but is is the question of canon something we really need to worry about here like Am I going to be watching this and spending all my time nitpicking? Like, oh, I, that that didn't happen. That that's. Different. I don't know because they don't have like a famous battle. Like they mentioned the Battle of Fondor in here once, and that's it. So it's like somebody like got the name of Fondor or something like that. I think, but like that that's about it. And like this this the the battle well, where they're going to take the Imperial bunker that's mentioned internally, and like it's not like a famous battle that needs to be mentioned sixty years after. Well, the Star Trek movies he's talking about, they specifically were like, this is all because of time travel. This is an alternate universe. And they set it up from the beginning There's to be nothing relevant. Different. Yeah. So this is this is still in the universe, but it's it's far like, enough away that it won't tread on anything. So uh, imagine they made a show about a clone trooper that died about, I don't know, a year after Attack of the Clones, and that was his story. On some other planet. It was him, a clone trooper, somebody he met along the way, and maybe a faction, and they all told their story in great detail. Nothing got tied in with Attack of the Clones, nothing gets tied in with Revenge of the Sith, nothing gets tied in with A New Hope. Yes, it leads up to maybe those things, but nothing big is happening. It, anything big or in detail that's happening is happening in his life, in his life alone. And that's what makes this exciting, is the fact that there's not a big battle happening. There's not anything great or epic involved. It's his life and the people's lives around them. So you're not going to be going, oh, well, what happened to, to the battle that happened at Andor back in Return of the Jedi? And blah, blah, blah. Like, I have to tie all this shit to Star Wars. You don't have to tie jack shit to Andor at all. I could have my wife watch this show, and she doesn't have to tie to anything to, to Star Wars. She doesn't even have to watch Star Wars to watch this. So, like, that's what I'm saying is, like, it's a crime drama. It but really is not, just a crime drama. I think maybe what he's getting at is it's not anti-Star Wars. You're not going to watch this and go, oh, the... Well, no, the, the, tra the trailer itself is, is screaming Star Wars. They're in the same universe. They're in the yeah, same galaxy. Yeah, it's just, it's doing something other than Star Wars, which is what Star Wars should be doing. Star Wars shouldn't be saying, oh... By the way, I know that you're here, Andor, but have you met Luke Skywalker? There's only one He's story set of characters. That we you need to go you. protect him. He's on Tatooine. So before you go get the Death Star plans, go and rescue yeah, Luke. Yeah, making the galaxy too small, which yeah. is the critique of both the prequel trilogy it's, and the sequel trilogy. It's saying it's it's too small. It's always... It's why Kenobi left a bad taste on me. Plus, they're not telling a very good story to begin with. But yeah, it's like they don't know how to talk about it. 
So yeah, it's a good thing because they're saying Star Wars can be other things besides just those same characters. Yes. And if and they can make the characters compelling, then great. Yeah. So that's that's where I'm going with this is the I'll fact it, that that it's it's I'll give it a chance. It may be Disney, but it's not Disney schlock is where I'm going with it. Yeah. Um which leads me to my next point. Um according to Star Wars Theory, and I'm gonna open up his channel here. Star Wars maybe. Theory. Nice. Um they openly admitted that the prequel or the sequels were bad. Um, so let me go ahead and and I hope you're listening to this, Polsky, because you're gonna you're gonna have a field day. Does he? Uh, what does he think of Star Wars Theory? I don't know. It's not a channel that I've seen very often. I don't think okay. he's gonna. I'm not only gonna bring up a little bit of this, but me and him are gonna have. I'm gonna have Star Wars Theory is a big channel. He's got 3.32 million. Yeah. On YouTube, Star Wars fans since 1996. A creator since 2016. This guy's pretty good. I recommend him, even if there are things I disagree with him on, right? Now, does he have any official ties to Lucasfilm, or is he just... just no, but, like, guy? they notice him. And he's, like I said, he's interviewed some big people. Now, is he the guy that, like, they, like, they ripped on him? Like, they made fun of him? And yeah, was like, like, what are you doing? He's the guy who cried over Luke's or return. Or Pablo Hidalgo made fun of him. And um, people hated on him. He cried over Pablo Luke's Hidalgo. return, and yeah, and he got slammed by Pablo Hidalgo. It's like, yeah. come on, man. Just, just but yeah, he does. I'd be a fan. He does fan fictions. He does a whole bunch of other stuff. So Disney finally admits they ruined. Oh put my! So hey, I might like this guy. Well, well, yeah, but he also does a lot of clickbait. So hold on, chill. Oh, out. okay. Yeah, he got me with the clickbait. I mean, he tells it right. It's not like untrue, but like it's there's there's baity click stuff in here. Okay, so hold on a second. I'm gonna bring up his video. And then we're we're gonna didn't notice. we're gonna pause. So this is credit to Star Wars theory, of course. You know, um, once again, my opinion on the guy isn't relevant to what I'm about to say. So the guy does really good stuff. He makes great live streams. He's really humble. He donates. He's a decent guy. There's a reason he has 3.32 million subscribers, and I'm a nobody. So keep this in mind. <laughs> um, the guy is really cool, and. If I ever got a chance to talk to the guy, talk actual Star Wars shop with him, I'd probably learn a lot more than I do now. So I'm going to keep that with that in mind. Let's no, go ahead and bring this up. And let's no hate to this guy, guy just because he's successful. No, but. To another video. Today we have something very interesting. It's going to get very controversial and quite real in this video, in this uh, reaction to this article and the information that we're going to get. You might have gotten a prelude Looking in background. Nerd Theory just last oh, yeah, sorry, Monday, a couple of days ago anymore. here. I and apologize. Josh and I were discussing here. this yeah. for the oh, first okay. time for me, and I would put it now on, I'm put getting it on into the full want. story, and I found the article, and I'm going to do a so thorough reaction on everything that we made, and we're going to talk about it because uh, things are a bit hectic at Lucasfilm, it would seem, considering oh, no, this a lot insider of, is uh, correct, vibes. and if not, well, oh, you know, sorry. shame on this article and everything else, but for the sake of this, let's say that things are actually credible, and I believe they are. So let's go ahead and read this and see what we make of it. Okay, so you guys ready? Let's begin. Now before we do, I want to make sure I reiterate something. If you like or dislike the sequels or anything watch Disney it, has done, please be respectful to everyone else and what? vice versa for everyone else who dislikes it. We're all Star Wars fans at the end of the day. No one is above the other. It doesn't mean if you like the Disney trilogy, you're not a Star Wars fan. And if you don't like the Disney trilogy, it doesn't mean you're toxic or sexist, or misogynist, or whatever they want to label us all with. I am here to report my findings and my thoughts on this as always, and I'm going to give it to you guys real and raw and uncensored. So, Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to tell him and tell you what he just said, okay? Because this is going to be very important as he continues. He just said that no matter who you are, you're welcome here. Okay? Now, I'm going to see where my headphones are. Because I do want friggin' to listen to this. But he did mention to people that no matter who you are, you're welcome here. And, like, you're not, you know, you're not uh, so whatever they want to call you if you like the so Disney movie. Really low, he's telling me that I'm welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. Okay. Hold on. I'm not Put the, hold these. Han shot. Hold yeah. Hold oh, my dude. All right, here. Han was the only one who shot at that scene. Hey, my clunky. <laughs> you're full of my clunky. Yeah. What's going on, Jay? Sir, I hope you're having a good night. It's okay. like George Lucas just like gave him a box full of confetti, like when he left. He's like, "If you open it, it's your, your it's funeral." Sure, McClunky. Oh man! All right, I'm gonna share. Try this. 
they're disinfected. They're my they're my my public streaming headphones, I suppose. So yeah. All right. So are we ready? Because now I got to stretch. Sorry, you're gonna have to get real close there, Kurgan. <laughs> All right, let's go. So here we go. Let's get into things. Well, we're this really gonna time get to talk about the state of Star Wars and Lucasfilm and everything that has gone down in the last little bit. So, for the time being, the next Star Wars film is scheduled for a December 2025 theatrical release. The previously slated movie, Rogue Squadron, won't be meeting its 2023 window and has instead been shelved. Given the current trend at Lucasfilm, the odds of a movie being ready in three years' time almost seems like an impossibility. It's been abundantly clear for years that internal turmoil has stalled the film's development process for the company since the completion of the sequel trilogy. This was confirmed last week when Lucasfilm SVP Michelle Rejuan was demoted. The producer was Good tasked voice. with overseeing Rogue Squadron's development in addition to other new films and was relieved of her duties following too many creative difficulties. Now three years removed from the last silver screen experience, Star Wars fans are itching to get back into theaters for a journey into the galaxy far, far away. That time is still a few years away at best, and it's not one that Lucasfilm is particularly looking forward to. With so much riding on the next theatrical title, Lucasfilm executives are actually worried about the franchise's next steps. And they should be, to be honest. Puck industry insider Matthew Baloney reported that Lucasfilm's grueling development time for the next Star Wars film is the result of a culture of fear and indecision among company executives. Now look, this Matthew Baloney guy might be lying or he might be 100% on the money and spitting facts and telling us stuff that he knows as an insider. I don't know the relevancy or the validity of this individual or this professional, but I am here to comment on this article as it's being written by a bunch of different article websites, and I want to give my take on it too, just not in article form, but in video form. Lucasfilm's internal mantra for new movies is getting it right, would you imagine that? An attitude formed after the sequel trilogy's development and production. The company internally acknowledges that the sequels were rushed to meet aggressive release dates. If this is true, if this is true, this is so disheartening to read because the fact that they took this story from George, didn't use any of his sequel trilogy treatments, and rushed to meet aggressive release dates, and in fact I can confirm this, is exactly what was happening. And this was actually written in Bob Iger's biography that he released just a few years ago. And I read most of it. Okay, we're doing another pause. Hold up. <laughs> read that. Audio jump with that. Okay. Just take a couple seconds, okay? He's gonna read a little bit of it, I believe. But just take a couple seconds. I'm gonna unpause it about 10, 10, 15 seconds. Don't look at the O face he's given, read the Read the, read the, uh, read just the section there. Okay, I got it. Okay. I'm going to give about another 10 seconds. Okay. I looked at it. Just a, screen. just a brief section. Then you, then you failed. Okay, we're moving on. I read the chapters with George Lucas, and he was trying to push out a film for one of the quarters of 2015, and that's when The Force Awakens came out. So when you give a company a, a product like Star Wars to Disney, they're going to be looking at their money. They're going to be looking at how many slots can they fill in that year of major titles. And I remember Bob Iger said that we love seeing big numbers at the movie theater. We love putting people in seats. And so having a big release, having a big weekend opening box office was a very big thing that he said in that biography. So he's rushing to meet aggressive release dates, meaning that they want to release any Star Wars project in a certain amount of time, which really makes them scramble and not focus on the story to be told, but rather just push something out to fit a timeline, to fit a release schedule so they can start working on the next one and so on and so forth and milk the cow, so to speak. This is not how you handle Star Wars. The resulting trilogy was something Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy elected to play safe. Quotations, choosing fan service and franchise management over creative writings. Now. What I say to this is, Kathleen, what are you smoking? 
what fan service did you provide in the sequel trilogy? You made Luke a goddamn bitch. You destroyed a legendary character. Han Solo was a hero for the Rebellion at the end of Return of the Jedi. You turned him into a deadbeat father who loses the Millennium Falcon. What the hell kind of fan service is that? Because Palpatine returned as a last ditch effort to save the franchise in which it only made it worse because it just because it didn't actually use any sort of creativity you just kind of brandished him as having returned and transferred his essence into another vessel of his clone body i found that to be the most lazy thing i had ever seen at the time i thought it was so cool that palpatine was returning i was really excited to see how they would do it but once i saw the film and i saw how they actually executed his return and executed him in the end with the same move that that Mace Windu used on him with Rey doing it with two lightsabers after he said if you strike me down I shall now live on in you I was very confused does he now continue to live or what's the deal it seemed like they were having to fill in so many things in the books and explain so much more just so you could understand the movie because they did a piss poor job at trying to write a story not for the sake of the story but for the sake of meeting aggressive timelines Okay, I knew you wouldn't. I definitely knew you wouldn't. Okay, here we go. You're going to hate me. I'm Neither just going to say, time. you're going to hate me. You go for it. Okay, are you ready? We'll come back to this. Good. We're going to come back to this. Let the hate blow through you. My personal opinion okay. is totally agree with a lot of this, right? I don't mind how they did Solo or Han Solo's character for um, the sequels. There are some parts I conflicted with because, um, like Sorry. me and Kurgan have talked about, Hold it back. Um, I thought the sequels were kind of rough. Um, but, but, I don't defend them in any case. <laughs> I watched this the first time and I was like, ah, oh, yes, sequel people, you're welcome. Come on in. <laughs> take your beating like a man. You come on in so you can take your beating like a man. Because <laughs> that's where I got from this. Also, also, as much as I would love to just believe that the sequels were hit with just aggressive release dates, which we have been told before. Um, yeah, not... And I don't blame, like I said, I don't blame him for this. Just saying, oh, we were slammed with, you know, release date A and release date B, and that we had to give people crunch. So, that you know, give us the that. slap on the wrist and we'll get going and we'll change the, the scrub. That is such a fucking excuse because I'm pretty sure that did happen. They over. But there's so much shit that happened behind the scenes with yeah, those movies. Solo, just as one example. Yeah, it, like, yeah, but like just the sequels in general, there's a lot more than, oh, sorry, we didn't meet our our numbers and stuff like that. Yes, it was probably part of it, but there was a lot more that could be done. Like, um, I feel like this is also one of those things where, what is it, what is it called? You know, you're not asking for permission you're asking for forgiveness at this yeah, point it's easier to ask for forgiveness so, than for permission so it's just do the thing and you, oh sorry yeah, oh we're sorry it's out there now um and this is kind of a very a very awkward um article because they're saying that well you know <laughs> we're going to be choosing to go in a different direction other than fan service because the fan service route isn't meeting our numbers. Well, I think you and I are kind of agreeing on this. The fan service, if you can call it that, was in Solo and Rogue One and primarily. Just to let people know. Unless just mentioning the character. I'm not. The fan service. In I'm, Mandalorian. I'm not a sequel lover by any means. There's a lot of Star Wars content that I stood by. And for years, I've always said this. The expanding universe lives on. It will always live on in my heart. It will always take place beyond anything else because that's what I grew up with. Still and that's just how it happens. Yeah. It's not just nostalgia. It's the fact that I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wipe. I'm not going to wipe 20 years of my life because Disney said, oh, it doesn't exist. We're just going to redo it all. Yeah. So yeah. you can go fuck yourself one. Yeah. And you know, that that's not happening. Like Lethal Weapon 4 is a good movie and the other Lethal Weapon movies never happen. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, well, thanks. So. 
no but thanks. the at the end of the day, the sequels were made, and besides Rise of Skywalker, which I like to think doesn't exist, um, Adolf's the one I hated. The he's least. the one who's defending it because I knew it was already um, trash. <laughs> I had to watch it twice because it was at the first time I was like, oh, this isn't too bad. You know, the because like I said, with him, that ending was pretty good. Adam Driver sold that ending for me. And then I had to watch it again and go, dude, where the fuck is the plot here? I can't find it. It's going too fast. Yeah. So the Force Awakens was act, actually had work put in it. You know, it did. I, I didn't like it, but it, I it, wouldn't it, call Alfonso a deadbeat dad. I mean, We've we there's tons of people who have turned to the dark side who've had failing masters. That's like that's yeah. like calling you know Obi Wan Kenobi a failure of a role model because well, you can say to the dark side. The story arc of Han Solo was that he wasn't a good guy, but he was he wasn't a good. Guy. He got to a better place, but then they're like ah, and then he relapsed into a jerk again. I didn't like how they like did they setting you know, everything. Um, that's my problem with it. I, you know, and I didn't like how they did how they did Luke, but he's also going to bring up a thing they with with Ryan Johnson. He's bring he's going to bring up like a five or six year quote where I also think that's really inaccurate because um, most producers, directors, writers will usually say whatever the fuck the general public needs to hear you can't at always the time. What they say in interviews, and if you're bringing up quotes five six years ago. Yeah, it's going to slam them. Yes, it does hurt them publicly, but they don't give a shit. They still make movies. And like I said, he he's going to bring up a quote here and I'm going to I'm going to I I don't exactly know where yeah. in the video, but you'll see it. I mean, where he says that Ryan Johnson preferred his movies to be controversial, half half liking them, half disliking them, yeah. which is what makes the 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 uh, last Jedi so 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 divisive. And if that was true, most of his movies would be like that, or they'd be mostly hated or wow. mostly loved. And like I said, if you've seen Knives Out, which I've I've I haven't, but he what was it, the other one he did? A uh, Looper. Yeah, and Looper. I liked Looper. I liked Looper too. Um, and well, Knives Out was, was it, really good. I liked it. So I mean, like, there's work put in there. He doesn't just make like random ass schlock. He just doesn't do Star Wars. And he that's, agreed to do it, and then he just. He yeah. just didn't do he just didn't do it right. Like he made a crappy Star Wars movie and that's like you make crappy movies from time to time. He tried his hand at a franchise and it didn't work. And sure. that's that's it. Um, you know, some directors and writers can't do can't do things. Like they go, they expand and they can't fucking do it and it either ruins their career or it sets them back. And so I think it is that if you're a franchise, maybe think twice before you <laughs> branch out some but like it, it's it's one of those things like because he he can probably do a franchise right, but I think he's had creative control for a good you know chunk of his career, and a lot of those people like to you know they don't like to be told what to do with their movies and like do well you know, did Ryan Johnson have carte blanche or not? I don't know, but it's like telling Steven Spielberg to do a movie your way, and yeah. he's gonna say fuck but, off. But didn't they say that was the problem with George Lucas is that he had no no naysayers he just could do whatever he wanted and he oh no guidance. i think so they're the same problems like oh yeah jj abrams he could do whatever no because it looked like he had some like ryan like johnson. he had people like talking to him i just i think it's the fact that ryan johnson had a set storyline given to him by disney he did it and then he changed it in the way he wanted to get it done because disney said oh well we're giving you creative control so that's kind of why want to. he kind of reset the previous movie and then he <laughs> reset it again to go back on track for the next one yeah i mean like i said i might swerve and get too into it but it happens in hollywood a lot it's just you know it's people, not a unique problem to him like well it's like an artist drawing up you know drawing or making a painting we're they're going to commission you to do this yeah we want you to do this they're like okay but i'm going to add my own personal touches to it so you don't like my personal touches mm -hmm. go fuck yourself right yeah so i uh hmm. i think really in this in this point when it comes down to it um <laughs> yeah i i don't like this i don't like a lot of the sequels there's a the, you know that's never going to change the sequels um, would would work better as like video games or comic books but to me not as I'm, sequels to return of the jedi you know i and i i, I like yeah. said i like this guy this guy's does good stuff he's usually the guy i refer to when it comes to star wars mediums he will usually defend the Disney stuff. He reads the EU for Disney. He does a lot of the comics. He's a prequel lover at heart. So the fact that he's taking uh, a, a different approach here. I think his deal. slamming of the sequel trilogy and in, in all intensive purposes, um, I think is a, a kind of a clicky thing. But I also, um, 
like I said, I agree with half of it. And there, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not just going to dis, you know, disarm them because to me, I don't just think it was like an aggressive release date. Um, you can say that about a lot of video games and there are developers and people who put their fucking work and time and energy yeah. into that stuff. Yeah. And, like Republic Commando, I feel um, like that could have used more development time, but it's a good game for what the game yeah, is. It isn't like, oh, I'm so disappointed. That it's terrible. I think it's the work ethic and I think it's the way people are presented with such work. So, and there was a lot of fucking background to those movies that, like, we didn't know for the longest time. Like, yeah, they didn't have sense. the Rise of Skywalker story completed until it was halfway through production. Oh, damn. Like, they kept t- telling Daisy Ridley different shit. And, like, like how are you supposed to act and how are you supposed to get your shit down if you don't know who your dad is? Yeah, and if you don't know, like, wow. what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Like, you know, that's what I'm saying is, like, you know you need to have your job in order. And if you don't have your job in order and your actors don't know who the character they're playing, they're not going to fucking act correctly. Like Peter so. Jackson with The Hobbit. It's like, this is what he could do in the time. It's like, what'd you expect? Yeah, not to mention the fact that not the sideline bin, which was, I think, a horrible yeah, he decision. Yeah, he got the shaft. So, that whole trilogy. You know, it was... It was it was very bad. It was very controversial. It was a mess. And the thing is, like a lot of these actors, I, it's not to say that I agree with them on on everything or think they're good guys, even. But it's like you can clearly see that they've been screwed over by Star Wars. Well, not just that, but I also think that Literally. Kathy Kennedy should be shelved at this point. Yeah, and not because I just dislike her as a person. I don't think she does you her don't job very well. She just doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't do. Even if George Lucas handpicked her. And all that stuff. Okay, and oh, let's start at the beginning. Also, Polsky, you're really not going to like this, but oh. this is just a neutral opinion, okay? This comes from a neutral point of view. This isn't coming from my point of view. Thanks for being I, here, Polsky. I just and, yeah, dude, I, I appreciate you. Like, you're my moderator, so let's let's keep that in line. Let's keep that in line. Um, Because really, at the end of the day, dude, I, I do appreciate you being here. But the, the big thing here, this is just coming from a neutral point of view because I cannot view these just on my own bias. Um, if anybody remembers 10, 12 years ago, the prequels were still viewed as bad movies all around. Um, uh, maybe Revenge of the Sith was the saving grace. And I, I liked parts of the prequels. Um, like, my big thing was episode one. That was the one I had the most problems. Even a little bit longer than that, we had people who dissed those movies. Yeah, like, he's like, dissing the movies now. Star Wars is back. And I'm so saying... Awakens has fixed all George's errors. I remember that. And I'm not saying... So hardcore. I'm not saying that the... The sequels will make a comeback because they're going to have a they're going to, you know, they're going to be people that are going to enjoy them. But the I don't think they're going so to make bad. That. People yeah. will look at the sequels. Fine. Um, like, let's hope that doesn't happen. No, but the I what I'm saying is the fact that if you're going to blame somebody first. Mm-hmm. Lucas starts it Yeah, start because it. it's not the movies he's made. It's the fact that after the prequels were made, he stopped handling Star Wars. Mm-hmm. He said, fuck it. The fans are hard. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah. And, like, he sold it to Disney. Yep. So, you know, I was dissing Uncle George for the longest time. I was one of those assholes who was like, yeah. dude, George Lucas is taking Star Wars in a horrible direction. I was too. I really liked the sequels. And I'm the dude who fell for the expanded universe. I said, there are artists and writers who can do Star Wars better than George Lucas. And I fucking fell for that hard. I was the opposite. I was like, now I never, I never read the new Jedi Order, so I never gave it a chance. A lot of people love that series. When I heard about it, I'm like, that sounds stupid. <laughs> I'd rather hear what George Lucas has to do because I know the prequels are coming out in two years, but they all had to be approved by him anyway. Yeah. And that was one of those things. But after where, episode like, one, I was like, uh, I hope the rest of this they, doesn't suck as much as. And this. that's what I'm saying is like, I think he just got tired of it because there was just a point yeah. in time at one point in time where he was just saying yes to he's everything. Set, yeah, he set himself up as the ultimate arbiter of everything Star Wars. And he was the genius, genius visionary and everything. Yeah, he made, he made it too hard on himself. So when we say things like, you know, we need to take this back to George. How old is George Lucas now, folks? Let's take a look. Let's, let's be getting close to Here, 80. Take my... Yeah, since we're not listening more, but... But hold on, we will be. Just don't yeah, so it. it's like Lucas is right and he's wrong. Just like... Well, no, it's just the right. fact that, like, we can't say, hey, let's take this back to George Lucas. He was born in 44, so... That would make him how old? I can't remember. Return of the Jedi is still my favorite Star Wars. And I think it always will be. And I like big portions of the expanded universe. And I don't diss on either episode one or the sequels because of, oh, it didn't follow the expanded okay, universe. Yeah. So he's 78 years old right now. 78, okay. Um, There are a lot of people who will 
It perma froze on you. Oh, dude, you got to look oh, at the map. Okay, I that was so we were holy shit, dude. So Strange Bloss was saying, "You're not going to like this. You're going to be angry <laughs> because I'm about to lay it down." So, so he he's Fine. still on your good side. Yeah, we'll still we'll now still, still let's go. Yeah. But but like I said before, it starts with it starts with Lucas, and to try to bring him back for something like this, like I said, there's going to be a point in time in his age where he's not going to be completely there. He said his health is going to be deteriorating, and like I think, I think he does have somebody helping him right now. Doesn't yeah, he? doesn't he have a caretaker? Like, do you really want somebody? Like, I mean, he is still like, you know, the creator of Star Wars, and he could probably still do some stuff. Well, and, and but... I know you can't trust everything that directors say in interviews, but he has said he's been saying for decades, like, I don't want to do Star Wars anymore. I want to do other projects. I want to do movies that I care about that nobody else cares about. He, he kept saying that over and over. And he took it upon himself to be like the Star Wars guy and keep creating Star Wars stuff. So it's like, it's a weird kind of thing where he's just tied, tied himself to Star Wars. He made himself too big to be able to fulfill his destiny as everything. And, you know, then he handed the whole thing over to Disney. And it's like, it's like I said before, I don't dislike the prequels. I'm, I, you know, I don't, I don't hate the sequels. Absolutely. Like a lot of people do. I don't think they're great movies. Uh, the only one I found fondly was what it is. the force awakens. And that's the one I've probably seen the most, but the other ones I've kind of had a hard time with. I always give you shit about the last Jedi, but that's about force awakens. is just, it's kind of just nothing for me. I mean, it feels okay. like a fan fiction. So alone, alone, when it first came out and there was nothing else before I enjoyed it because it had, it introduced its characters. Well, at least for me, it did. The characters had promise. I didn't mind that that Han Solo died because originally he wanted dead. So yeah, fuck, wanted, Harrison Ford didn't want to be part of it anymore. He wanted to be dead in Return of the Jedi. Let me go. I just want to go. But like, but see, it's kind of like like I don't care what the actor thinks. I'm I'm concerned about the story in the movie. You know, they're not going to want to do shit if they're not interested in right. writing. But that's how you got. That's how they got the star power Harrison Ford in it. Was my character dies? Like okay. So blame Harrison. It was the same thing for uh, what's her I face, Sigourney Weaver. Weaver. Sigourney Weaver wouldn't want to do Alien Three until she unless she died, and they still got her ass back in the next Alien movie. <laughs> so I mean, she and playing a different character, but still, yeah, oh, she played a clone of herself. I know it's just like <laughs> under underhanded way. Oh, fine, I'll do. It. I'm pretty sure she did it very, very convincingly. I, if I remember the last time I saw that, I was like 10 or something. And but I guess like, the alternative is you either don't feature the character at all or you recast them. I would have reca recast it. But people wanted her to come back. So, yeah. so Green Weaver is awesome. But yeah, Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection are not, not good compared to the first two. Just no. no. And there was a there's a whole nother. That's a whole nother rank. It would have made great video yeah. games, great comic books, but not it, good. It, it, there was a game. There was a game. Yeah. Alien Three. A, a Genesis. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very, it's very little like the movie. God. And there was like, it's hard there was a whole fucking oh, uh, like Alien versus Predator. Uh, there was a whole fucking Terrible hell movies. based on like the making of that movie and all sorts yeah, of shit. Yeah, hell production. Yeah. The, uh, what was it the the production cut or something? It had some name. The assembly cut, that's what it was. Yeah, isn't watch it. Was it, it wasn't, a, isn't there like a, wasn't Michael Bean in that? Was it Michael Bean or? No. Who, who was it a, who just doesn't fucking think Alien 3 is canon? I'm not is sure. It one of the actors, I can't remember. It might be Michael Bean. I mean, he they only showed like, oh, oh yeah, he died in stasis. Sorry. Yeah, and like he just but then like, in that he video game, the he Royal reads, Marines, they they had him as a voice actor. Yeah, it doesn't say. He, oh yeah, while I was asleep, I woke up and had an adventure, and then went back. Yeah, to because sleep. he reads the original script instead, or like the altered script at like conventions, and he like <laughs> he he will like not talk to you if like you're a fan of that movie. Or oh, I think man. like that. I can't remember. Like there was a friend of mine who I walked up to him that. and said like he like disliked Alien Three, and he's like, "Good, because it doesn't exist." And like he like walked off on him. <laughs> He's like a grumpy asshole. Like it's, it's funny. I can respect it. Yeah, man. If I was a, yeah. I was like, dude, I've seen you like Terminator, and you don't look that grumpy. But Jesus, I mean, that was like what forty years ago. You probably yeah. are, like don't want to. See, that's the thing. Them. Like, I mean, the actors are not their characters. That's just their job. Oh, no. yeah. So, but yeah. Anyway, like I, you know, like I was saying before, it's um, you know, yeah. I feel like, like I said, there's like another 20 plus minutes of this to go on the video. So, you know, take it for what you want. It's, I can put okay, the link in and you can watch it yourself. But the the big thing is, is so the way he presents the beginning of this, I feel is 
I'm done. Um, Disney finally admits they ruined the sequel trilogy. Real. I feel like it's a little misleading. So, okay. yeah. um, because you follow this guy more than I do, so yeah, because this is this is a guy who will go one way and then kind of he's kind of veering into a different direction. Are they just doing Devil's Advocate, or this is what he really thinks? I, well, I think that he's doing Devil's Advocate right now. Okay. I think, but he does have a lot of truth in it too. So, like I said, I'm not saying he's bad, but the big thing is, is, um. I want to kind of in like put in some. There's another one he's got to follow. Some big, big, big stuff in there. What? Oh, I burped. He's got to follow me. Oh, he's long gone. Yeah, I was about to say he's gone, dude. See, what you're talking about? He's missing all these burps. Like the guy came on and was like, "Burp if you want me to follow." But <laughs> sorry, got um, famous. But yeah, like I don't like as far as like reading the article. He he will say like if it was true, but like to me it just seems bullshit. Like. This wasn't just rushed to be aggressive release dates. This was that, and so you think the error, the rumors he's reporting on are BS? Or do no, you think his take? I think there's more to it than that. And then on top of that, I think the fact that you know, to me here on on the Rancast, yeah, I don't like the sequels very much. But if you're a guy who comes in as a Star Wars fan, you like them, yeah. Plus, he's going to tell you, I'm not going to watch them again, and I'm going to tell you, I don't like them, yeah. but. You could tell me anything that you like about him, and I'll tell you parts of that that I did enjoy. Yeah, there were there was there was a part, dude. I don't know what's going on. Our stream, I'm, there was one part stream on the last side Jedi that I liked. One part that I liked, out of context. But like, but what I'm saying is that everybody is welcome here. Like, at the down, rantcast, yeah, down to the core. Rantcast, strange bus, and here, but disagree fans. with all of my opinions. You I'm are, glad you're here. You are, yeah, you are, you are welcome here. And I'm pretty sure he feels that same way too. It's the fact that like I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> you're, you're welcome, welcome, and then I completely slam. You the like thing what that you like. like, but yeah, if you can give reasons why you like what you like, it's like all right, or if you want to, I mean, you don't have to. You um, just like something for no reason. But just like it, you know, I'm also gonna say that. Um, I tell you why I don't like it, and I think that's what he was doing. But I the think, big thing I feel is, like if you like the Star Wars sequels, you're gonna find even more stuff in the previous movies that you will like. Right, if you're being honest with yourself. Yeah, and unless you just like something because it's new, like there are people that do that. They're like they like the latest Batman movie, but they don't like the one right before it. And when the next one comes out, they say they like that one and not. The oh one. man, they're like they so just want. What's new? Wolf's a Batman 89 fan, true and true. And there are some people who just like that. I like Batman 89. And like they won't go any higher. They won't go any yeah. any further. I, I haven't seen the new The Batman. I haven't either. But I mean, I like the, I like the Dark Knight. So maybe I like the, the, the new movie of each new trilogy. I don't know. It's kind of like uh, me and Superman movies and stuff like that. Superman's been hit and miss. I've yeah. kind of like... Kind of like died on Superman one and two. From jettisoning most of original uh, writer Michael Arndt's idea. Pretty good. It had some weird stuff in it. Wasn't it Brent, Brandon Roth? Yeah, I met that yeah. guy. He's a really, he's a really nice yeah. guy. I used to watch. Uh, he was Evil X number three. Lewis, Lewis and Clark. Which Lois, one was my favorite? Lois and Clark. Lois and Clark. Yeah. Dean was it? Is it Dean Cain? Was Superman in that? I believe so. I never saw Smallville. I have watched Smallville. The guy who did uh, Lex Luthor was awesome. I wonder what he's in anymore. He didn't do a lot of stuff. Gotham. Well, that was bad, man. I never saw it. I, my wife watched it. I heard he was a big person. People but were very disappointed. I I would vomit before I watched that show. Like, they could, there was no some, offense. They anyway. couldn't talk about the Joker, so they had a guy who was just like the Joker. But do you mean the guy who plays in Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order? He played the Joker. Uh, the not Joker. The maybe Joker. The the no the 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 was Joker would be Joker could be Joker before the show got canceled. Yeah. So yeah, I, I feel sorry. For, well, a guy comes back to HeroScape. It's like I feel bad for the people who invest in something, and then it just drops off, or they bungle yeah. it, or whatever. Like I said, there were good parts to the sequels, and. You could tell because you could tell in certain parts of this. Besides the the rise of Skywalker, like it's like a role playing game, like um, the idea of oh, a former stormtrooper. There's your character. Now, where can you go with him? And you had character development in the Force Awakens. You did an orphan who just has the Force. Oh, okay, go with it. Let's see, well, fuck, even even Ray had something. Yeah, like she was a mysterious character, but she had something. Could have been any. And you know, you had you had a previous character come back. You had Han Solo, Chewbacca, and then it introduced Luke at the end. Which was the greatest part because it did it all the way to the end. You were like, "Oh fuck! Why couldn't he come back sooner?" But it like 
it made you feel good because she hands the lightsaber and she's like, oh, there he is. Why is he only there at the final part? But maybe that's what they mean by fan service is like, oh, just seeing a character. It's... No, because to me, it, it, it's not just like, hey, he pops in like, oh, I'm Luke. I'm going to save the day. Like in the, the Last Jedi, like like Luke popped in and saved the day. Like yeah. to me, that's fan service, right? Fan because... service is like Yoda whipping out a lightsaber and jumping into battle. You're like, oh. but then afterwards, you're like, oh, it was cool like... and attack the clones. Yeah. It's it, it's how you introduce it, right? Give your character some fucking development yeah. well with that it was like yoda's sitting around he's mulling around he's like, it's like finally action <laughs> yeah did you and then he's wrong it? he's wrong but at least he tried give it a good try there yoda good try <laughs> like i said it's i just feel like the character need whether you know him or not they need more development before they just hop in and do something right. but you know that's what i'm saying is like the, the fan service right yeah. The Mando was good because it, it brought character development for your main character. It added characters you didn't know that won't come back. Then they started bringing in, you know, characters like Ahsoka Tano. And yeah. you got... That I took as fan service. You got his crap like that. And I was like, dude, the lady, the, the lady should be dead. They That is either a Kathleen Kennedy request or like, something. I, because me? Because that character you like. I swear to God, she died in Rebels, and she should have been dead in Rebels. She had a fantastic farewell in Rebels, and that's where it should have ended. Like, I I, clone. It, dude, for real. It's pissing all over it. Like, I, I don't like, think you invest in the character, want, if you do... If you want... Okay, hold on. I'll... Sh I'll here. Put your I head. I could say I feel bad for... No, put the headphones in. We're gonna, we're gonna ride this train for a little while, because oh, I'm telling you now... I could probably even type it in and it would still pop up. Pop still up. Katana. Hold on. Tell me she doesn't get stabbed. With Wait, who in Rebels? Oh, look! Ahsoka's real death. Rebels. Six years ago, before she fucking comes back. Does she get stabbed through the chest with a lightsaber? No. You can survive that. Will you, will you watch it? Just fucking watch it. <laughs> Hold on. Hergen will not be appearing in the next ring. When Thrawn, uh, old keep, I never finished it because of Thrawn came over thing. I had to stop. Okay, um, do you want to watch it then? If you don't, I'd click out now. Spoilers! So, I mean, it's really not a spoiler anymore. So, it's up to you, Polsky. It's but a spoiler for me, but I, I don't care. I mean, I watch very little. It's really not a spoiler because she doesn't die. Oh, so it's not her. So it's clickbait. Come on. No, it's not because it was six years ago before she came back. Oh, the, so the they killed her, and then they brought her back. Really don't care. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I mean, I care, because this was a really good fucking they scene. Care. And I liked I liked Ahsoka in Clone Wars, so that was a big thing. Like, I actually grew to like the character. Yeah, she but, started out extremely annoying, but then she became a fan favorite. You know, credit to whoever the fuck this is, Raison, who um, posted this six years ago when, you know, this was her death. Let me go ahead and... Even states her death in the top. Oh, you can't see that. You do. I love sniffs as well. So yeah, this was a great farewell, and you're gonna see and hear some. Stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're gonna hear some stuff in here. I saw Clone that was Wars fucking the dope as shit. Not the movie, dude. The movie sucked at no. I know but, it did, and I knew it did, and I was just like, I don't care. I'm just gonna right. see a schlock at the theater. Yeah. There's nothing else to do. It was foretold that you would be here. Our long-awaited meeting has come at last. I'm glad I gave you something to look forward to. We need not be adversaries. The Emperor will show you mercy if you tell me where the remaining Jedi can be found. There are no Jedi. You and your Inquisitors have seen to that. Perhaps this child will confess what you will not. I was beginning to believe I knew who you were behind that mask. But it's impossible. My master could never be as vile as you. Anakin Skywalker was weak. I destroyed him. Then I will avenge his death. Revenge is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. I'm Ahsoka, Master Yoda sent me. You never would have made it as Obi-Wan's battle.
I got you baited. Sorry. Hold on. Got him. This is better. Here we go. Hold on. I'll switch it back here in a minute because I've gotta, I've gotta, gotta get it back here. Yeah. Copyright here we go. Destroyed. Yeah. Complete copyright strike. But we should be in better. I don't know how good the quality is. It says 720p, but I don't believe it. Let's try it again. Sorry, guys. Revenge is not the Jedi. That's probably better volume too. I know all the Jedi. The ending of this is very disheartening. It makes me very sad. A seven-year-old's crying. I'm not a seven-year-old. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm just looking at the rating. Did they really get into it. Oh, shouldn't have done that uh, twirl off the side of Vespa's shoes. She comes back. Here, here's the good part. See, this is before Kenobi. Cut off the mask. He like tricks her. Help me take this. I won't leave you. Not this time. Look at his eye. Yeah. Well, he like, hold on, wait. Expanded the universe. Then you will die. Ahsoka! That is your destiny. Okay. Too violent for TV. Oh, so we don't get to see her. No, she. So that that was the point. She got trapped in that like force pyramid. I can't remember what it is. She was trapped in there with Vader. Okay, and you know Vader being who he is, right? The last thing she gets to hear is her old master's voice that trained with her. And like the last thing before this, because there's a section in Rebels where you see her, right? So you kind of get to know her story. But there's a section before then. And I think it's Clone Wars where she leaves because she gets banned from the Jedi Temple for false accusations. So she's done being a Jedi because she believes the Jedi's dogmatic ways are stupid. So she leaves the Jedi Temple, even though they say, oh, we fucked up. And um, and then, like, she leaves and then it shows this. It's implied she didn't make it. Because Vader comes back and she doesn't. And she's trapped in there. Like, they're both trapped in there. So, it's like, what'd you do to her, man? It never I shows her death. Go. Yes, therefore allowing people to just bring her back. But like for like the longest time, she never came back. So I think it was just like I'm thinking it was some sort of executive decision that they brought her ass back and just decided to say, okay, she didn't die. It's the only reason I ever watched this show. Because I had no, almost no interest in Kanan Jarrus or Ezra Bridger at all as characters. It was implied later in Rebels that she died. To me, yeah, to me and a lot of people. Like, I talked about it for like the longest time. Like, she never comes back. How'd you survive? Until, oh no, 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 I lied. She does, because she does come back in the final season, I thought. Yeah, never mind, I lie. At least she didn't get stabbed through the chest with a lightsaber. It was implied until the final season. I never watched the final season until recently, so that was my fault. So, like, forever, forever I came back. But they did a final season. Yeah. So, if I watched Rebels, I'd get played just like everyone else. Yeah, I got, well, I missed out on the final season. So, I correct myself because I did, I did a horrible opinion. So, this whole thing was for just you guys to watch. 
Because somebody, luckily, somebody did jump in and she goes, You're wrong, you moron. You're passionate about it. She comes back in the final season. She does. Um, they She comes back because I think the final season of Rebels has like a Return of the Jedi moment. She comes back then. And I was like, What the fuck? And she talks in uh, Rise of Skywalker, so he's dead. Hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess but no one's ever really gone. Nope. Not in Star Wars. They always come back. If the writers want it, then they're back. They're back. And we're back. Well. Thanks for that reminder, Polsky. I, I forgot. I totally forgot about the last season. Right. So what's our what's our final word on whatever it is we're talking about? Thanks. They're not paying attention. <laughs> well, we were talking about Star Wars theory. We were talking about the sequel trilogy and the direction overall of Star Wars, right? Yeah, I really just think that um, I think there are people in play right now that are using certain writers and uh, directors and producers um, to <laughs> to don't thank me to uh, they're kind of overworking them to make Star Wars better or more more watchable or tolerable. He thinks that we're misunderstanding. I'm misunderstanding you. you Why? Are. You you said that she was in. It was later. It was implied later in Rebels that she died. It wasn't. I just didn't watch all the last season until later on in in life. Season finale with Ahsoka and Vader in the temple. Yeah, you just reminded last episode. Yeah, you just reminded me of the final season. That's why I thanked you, as you said. Oh, was it implied later? And I said, uh, no, it wasn't because I remembered the last season. So, so you both stopped watching it. Then you came back and watched. Yeah, because I I did what he did. I stopped watching it like it's midway like, oh, through the last season. My favorite character. All right. I'm no, back. it was midway through the last season. I stopped watching, and then like I came back later on a couple years ago to finish it, She's and back. she ca- she comes back in the final season somewhere. So it he kind of like reignited the brain fart that I had. Uh, okay. <laughs> but anyway. yeah, uh, I mean, I because if you look like in our previous episodes. Prior to the channel, um, I stated that they're really using John Favreau and um, hey, Dave Filoni a lot. The savior of Star Wars. They're so, putting them in charge of a lot of things. So Kathleen Kennedy, Kennedy can say whatever the fuck she wants to say because she just overviews it all and she reaps in the rewards. And, you know, it's easy to sit on your ass and collect money all day. But, um, you know, it, I don't know. I, that probably comes off really harsh. So but he didn't like the Thrawn introduction me and him have a different view on oh. <laughs> i just remember thrawn from the heir to the empire i, I prefer Fra- thrawn and those three the books from timothy zahn but the beginning of the i was glad they brought him back 90s. but yeah well, he's, he was dead too he's two but yeah but he's two different eras behind and so like he's in a completely different era in the books like this is pre. Oh, you're right. Because this is pre. A new in the Jedi era. This is before. Yeah, this is so before he, New Hope. No way he died. He wasn't a Grand Admiral yet, because yeah, the Empire was still at the height of its power. So it's it's like one of those things of you know whether I could sit through it and say, well, you know, I could still read my books, and that's one of those things where like you say. It's like you say, like you got tired of it because you don't like want to have to watch it, put it all together, and yeah, it's well, like it's a for me, opera. Well, I followed this for forty five years, and I've seen everything. Like, yeah, I don't need to do that. It's just I pick what I enjoy exactly. now and do that. You go through the uh, buffet line, and you're like, I like this. And if it doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense. I don't spend my life going, well, you know. Star Wars. I mean, Thrawn was in Rebels. Okay, I mean, I guess whatever. And then like, I'm like, well, I'll just go. You know, Thrawn was better in Heir to the Empire. So yeah, like it's like I want to see Boba Fett when he was swabbing the deck before he became a Mandalorian. You mean back at Camino? <laughs> yeah, get him, Dad. Get him. Fire. Fire. <laughs> yeah, it's like I want to see the boring stuff that Luke was doing on the. Moisture farm before. Oh, but I want to go to Tasha Station to pick up power converters. Like that was his favorite thing. Like you see him pick up power converters. Like yes, these are awesome. 
I never got to pick him up. He goes back to Tatooine to build his lightsaber, and he's like, I'm going to stop by. She stays in those motherfuckers. He keeps going there just to hang out with his friends and waste time. He never actually picks up the power converters. He's like, oh, no, his friends are all gone. This time I'm going to get him. No, I can't hold him forever, Owen. Most of his friends are gone. (laughs) So much of his father. (laughs) That's what I'm afraid of. Get those droids cleaned up, and you can go to the Academy next year. Yeah. See (laughs) <laughs> it's a whole other year. Get Blue Milk in full production. It's only one more season. That's supposed to be a big thing. It looks like I'm going nowhere. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's our that's our talk for the Rantcast. I want to thank everybody who's been with us here today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. <laughs> it's been it's been wonderful. We have a guy named Feet in here. I'm pretty Feet. sure. He's, ah, I don't Feet know if back. he's a bot or not, or if he's Listen, real. Well, uh, if he's not real, he'll be banned later. We have a Discord streamer community. That which I'm pretty sure he is legit. Not legit. Yeah. Well, um, Jacer. Jacer's real. Uh, as real as they come. Please tell me this name again. I'm gonna butcher it. Is it uh, Onixius? Onixius. Thank you for Onyxius. joining and following. Like for dinner. We appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And Polsky, as always, it's a pleasure. Yep. I enjoy. Even though you're wrong about everything. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Polsky band feet. Can't have feet. You, you yeah. guys have seen. You guys have seen more Rebels and Clone Wars than I have. So all I hold back my own opinion because I don't know. Yeah. I don't know just a lot about those. All bots. Yep. All the time. But yeah, I I uh I enjoy having you guys here. We we appreciate you having mm-hmm. having part of the rant cast and talking Star Wars, talking board games, talking Yeah. Crap that annoys us about entertainment and bizarre decisions they make sometimes. And this will be part of the VOD this will be up as part of the VOD. I'll have this highlighted. It'll be part of a highlight. It'll be the full VOD minus the BRB that we took. And um that way there'll be a VOD section and be a highlight section. So when the VOD drops off after I think it's fourteen days, if you're not an affiliate, then you guys can still watch this. Then once we have this uploaded to YouTube, once the um uh Rancast podcast YouTube gets yeah. uh created, because we're still taking our time on that. Yep. We gotta carefully make sure we differentiate from yeah. all the rant casts out. Yeah, because Lewis Black does the rant cast yeah. as well. Well Lewis so Black we don't get be stayed. angry with us. We're not I don't trying care to if you're angry with me or not. He's I'll always angry. I'll just change it. It's fine. <laughs> but we'll or the other rant cast. You know, we uh we'll go ahead and back this up to the YouTube channel. That way it'll be available. Our embarrassment will be available for all to see. That's right. But yeah. So we appreciate everybody for watching. I hope everybody has a good night. It's twelve AM our time. U.S. Central Standard, probably 11 or 1 for some of you. Um, So we, once again, appreciate you taking the time to sit with us, chat with us, and we hope you have a great rest of your evening slash morning. And we'll catch you guys on the Rantcast next time. I will probably be streaming later on in the Uh, morning. I'll probably be doing something. I'm going to be busy probably till December and I'll... Well, I guess we got the holidays, but well, yeah, we'll stream as much as I can. You should probably put a notice up there. You're taking a hiatus. Yeah, I definitely am. So, so what I what I want to do for the future is on Fridays do Space Crusade on HeroQuest fans Twitch, and on Saturdays do HeroQuest. But the rest of November is a wash for me because I got family stuff. I'm going to be busy, but yeah, I can't wait to get started again. Tomorrow I have my it's me and my wife's eighth seventh anniversary. Ah, congratulations! So. Um, I will probably be streaming tonight. Um, I'm going to get some caffeine, get everything up. So if you guys are still going to be up, you can tune in with me. I'll either be doing uh, Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot, we'll be Kaka Carrot Cake, or we'll be doing something else. I don't know. Maybe I'll play some Metro Exodus again. But we'll figure something out tonight. Um, I'll probably, I can put a vote in the Discord if people are wanting to check it out. But that will probably be the plan for tonight. Just have to get people... Yeah. things switched over and stuff done but so uh the bots of discord on discord and hero quest fans on discord yeah we're gonna put links in here let me grab the we've discord. all got our own communities i think in the about page of twitch i think i put everything did you okay i got the basic stuff never mind we don't need the discord brought up uh, get out of here get get out of here oh i didn't yeah, close the stream youtube hero quest uh xsc3 home of hero quest fans and then it's in the about page on Strange Boss. The Strange Boss on YouTube. 
Yeah, it's in the about page here on uh, the Rantcast podcast. This is Go where we come and check together to uh, unleash the rage. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Rantcast. There'll be a raid. Yeah, stay on board if you uh, want to stick for the raid. We're trying to look for somebody right now. <laughs>